Sure can. Oh, not on SPL though. So Steve, uh, the last watch was uh, going in 200 meter steps, continuing to waypoint two. Would you like to continue along that way? We are gonna hold here and try and collect a sample of a rock first. Roger. And then, so the rock that uh, the last watch was most interested in is this one right here. If we can poke it, right. and right. uh, if can not, we'll okay? find something else. Yep, we can hear you, Dan. Yep. Video comp check. Check. Co pilot contact. Hey, Tammy. Yep, you want 4K somewhere, don't you? You know what I want. You know you're waiting for you're days. How about right in front of me? Right in my face. Can I do a 4K test? Uh, no, I just want to see it. <laughs> Your Argus pilot can do it a lot quicker than I can, actually. Uh, 4K to H21, please. Yeah, she only has to push two buttons. I have to push about six. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Copilot. Why we do that to ourselves, I don't know. Wow. Dun, 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 dun. So uh, what I'm seeing there is the arm way sooner than I'd usually see it in Zeus. Steve, can you uh, circle the rock or whoever's on the uh, telestrator? I saw it, now I've forgotten. That <laughs> rock. Very, very detailed drawing. You can uh, zoom in there. The highest quality on the 4 to 8. Zoom yep. in. You mean that rock that I can't reach? <laughs> uh, uh. Depends on which view you're looking at. Get there from here. Are there any other rocks you would like to look at before I disturb the visibility and move the ROV? That one is I highest priority, so unfortunately. Highest priority, yeah. Roger. Just wait, it might actually be stuck to the seafloor too. I can't even like I can't even touch it. Miles away. Is anything else here loose? Yeah, so okay, so there's a good chance it might be a loose one. So let's go move and risk the mucking up the viz. You don't like that rock I touched, huh? Nope. Can't talk you into it. <laughs> Not if you paid me to take it. Whoa. <laughs> wow. I see how it is. So, Steve, is this rock okay. of interest because it's glassier than the... Yeah, I think it's more angular in nature, yeah. so preferable for uh, lots of different geological applications. So, let's do something interesting. Try and land with it in 4K view, because if it's in 4K view, you can definitely reach it. Okay, uh, give me a second here. I gotta figure out what buttons I'm supposed to push. Is there a hot button? Oh, they're all labeled now. What's up with that? Sorry, it's been a while since I've been in, in here. So the, the sample processing imaging, we're going to take an image of it before we disturb it, and then we'll uh, yeah. poke it. Um, if I can manage to land here without disturbing the visibility, you now have a 4K image of it. Oh. It doesn't look so angular from this angle. Yeah, though. well... Let's take a look at take a look at it first. Let's see what lights does she have on here. So which one is the 4K? The one that's right in front of you, right? The one that's right yeah. in front of me. Um, let's see, I have to press another button here to get that rock back in here. I'm the lasers. Oh, she's got the camera all wonky. No, oh, I'm wonky. So 4K is offset a little to the right. Um, I think it's right below the lasers, right? Yeah, you're you're right about on it. Hold on. Yeah, right there. Antonella, can you uh, turn on the porch light? And see what happens. Maybe we'll get a, 
And while you're doing that, Tammy, you can zoom in on that highly valuable rock. Hopefully this won't blow it out. Maybe the porch light back off. Sorry, that's illuminating my landing. Okay. Do you want a detailed... Uh, that's a pretty good shot. We'll do an in-situ grab here and then uh, with the lasers, and then we'll go for a collection. All right, are you happy All with set? that shot is what I'm hearing? The press a uh, sample in situ, and then it'll grab a sample in situ button. Uh, yep. Now we are good for collection. Roger, collecting. Stand by for grip force check. Grip force verified. Nine. So what was the uh, outcome of the, um, which samples are going in which box? Because uh, I forgot to put the plug in the forward bio box. We're going to try and put the rocks in the forward box as much as possible. Right. So. It appears to be somewhat friable. Yeah. Let me uh, stand by. I'm going to just change my grip force here so I don't crush it. So since uh, we already put a rock in the forward box on the port side, this one's going to go in the starboard insert. Rumor is there are itty bitty rocks. I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah, they're pretty small. This one is pretty soft and friable. Um, be, yeah. But we'll, let's, let's keep going with it for now. We can always grab another one if we see one along the way. Sometimes while they're manipulating it, we can take an image also while it's in the manipulator and get all the sides of it. Just take zoom like two, two captures. Yeah. Try and keep it in the light here. So this is the underside. Lots of sediment stuck to it. And then give it a rotate when you're ready. I can move it up to clear water if you want a clear image. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. It's, yeah, sure? we'll grab grab the image and then stow it. Right good. All set? All right. Good. Happy, happy. Stow it. Um. Looking at the sexting camera, Steve? Uh, I can pull it up. Just give me a second. Yeah, can somebody pull it up? The reason I'm asking is that I want to... Before I put the porch out, I want to make sure I don't extend. You got some clearance. Extend the sexting camera into one of these rocks. So. Yeah, you got some clearance from this end. I do. I'll probably ask for that several times, even though I can obviously see it with the Zeus here. It's parallax air. And I think I haven't done this yet, but hopefully I can see it in the 4K when I extend. Let's find out. I think it's pretty This will also be a nope. This kind of rock will also be great for the microbe uh, we're trying to sample on some of these more altered crusts. Altered rocks. Oh beauty, I can see it in the 4K. Nice. Okay. Looks good. Yep, still looks good. Alright. Uh you wanna hit us with the porch light again? the embarrassing uh, plug there. Some other jewelry in there too that I decided to take for a ride. Good. So usually about now you can start hit the sample button and then fill in the sample ID. Double check. Okay, make sure it's the next you number. Kill that light and retract the porch please. Yep. Sample collected. Yeah, first one of the four to eight watch. Woohoo! Go team. Now, Steve, was that a good rock? <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, it's the rock that our onboard geologists recommended. So, 
me knowing not much more about rocks, uh, I'm going to say that was a good rock. Trust them. Looks like a good rock. Um, so, just give me a second to do some housekeeping here. Magnum shoulder appears to be all the way up. So, uh, Nav is going to drop a target. Uh, what's that sample ID? Nav is sure is. Thanks. Um, that sample ID is NA-137-003. 003. Yes. Great. Tammy, can you try zooming in just a bit and see uh, what happens? Like That's how far? Good. That's good. Okay. Wow. Okay. What am I, uh, what am I doing? Steve, any other samples? Yeah. No, no other samples here, so we can uh, move on. I okay. think it's a good idea. Yeah, we'll move in steps um, at whatever speed you were moving previously. Yeah, we were doing uh, 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 knots. That and looks pretty good, 0 0.2. Great, 200 meter steps. Bridge, Nav. Yeah, we're okay to move the ship. Uh, 200 meters, bearing 271. Uh, we can continue at 0 0.2 knots, please. Thank you. So um, I have a question about the 4K operation. Do you need to be seated down, or can we do it on the fly type of thing? It's going to be uh, right here as long as I'm sitting here. So. OK. I'm just trying to figure it out. So in case we line up something on the way, I can give a shout out. How long does it take for everyone to get uh, to trigger the video? Is it instantaneous, or does it take a second to? takes as long as it takes my arm to reach up and hit cool. record. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, Sam, have yeah. you, uh, we should time how long from when you started uh, moving the ship to when Argus starts moving. Sure. So everybody in here is aware of it, including us, because uh, this time, like, I'm even with Argus, and we're going yeah. that way. Yeah, actually, yeah, let's, um, let's change that heading. Let's do 330. Three okay. zero. 330. Yeah. Three Bridge, Nav. Can we change the, the heading to 330, please? I'm sorry, bearing to 330. Yes, thank you. So um, there's some things that we usually consider before we ship move. So yeah. the sonar, where Herc and Argus are in relation. Yeah. All that happy stuff. Um, happy with 330? Yeah, okay. I think. I don't know yet. Okay. I don't have a feel yet for how steep it is, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're heading upslope right now. Um, so, I'd like to have Argus be. uh, behind us as we're heading up the slope. Okay. You wanna for obvious reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I'll keep an eye on it and we can stop if we need to. You'll typically see me, I'll, I'll try and stay about one of these 20 meter boxes yeah. away from it. Perfect. And I'll try and stay out front. We're pretty deep, so I imagine it's going to take like five minutes or something. Yeah. Forgotten all those numbers. I have to learn them all over again every time. So I'm wondering if this is a good time to introduce everybody on the watch. We just had a watch change. Uh, hello world out there. I am Dejana Figueroa, Science Communications Fellow on this watch. Super excited to be here from Los Angeles, California, joining you all here. And we have an amazing team on this watch right now. Why don't we go through the back row first? Sure. My name is uh, Jordan Akiyama. I'm with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service out of Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service does a lot of management out here in the Pacific Rim Islands Marine National Monuments, especially in co-partnership with the Nature Conservancy over on Palmyra Toll National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, I'm, I'm All fine. right. Just I'll go next. Do whatever um, you want. Uh, my name is Steve Oskovich. I'm the watch lead and lead scientist on this cruise. Um, I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Boston yep. University, and uh, I study deepwater corals, and uh, also excited to be our first on our first watch. 
for a long, long time. Right. Yeah. We are so lucky to have Steve. Like when the corals come uh, into frame, he's going to drop some knowledge for us. So I'm <laughs> super excited about that situation. So we can continue. It's a lot down. of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hi guys. I'm Rebecca Lippitt, sitting in the data logger seat, um, part of the science team here. I'm a second year PhD student at the University of Rhode Island, and I'm excited to be on watch for the first time, officially, I suppose. Can we zoom in on this colony up here on the rock, if you have time? Roger. Steve, I noticed you said colony. Mm -hmm. You can uh, push in a little bit there, Tim. Yeah, I think it's uh, looks like a coral colony here. I'm going to take a closer look, see if we can refine that ID a little bit. We've got a couple different coral colonies here. We've got one that has a brittle star on top of it. Try and ID that one. We also have got a black coral off to the left-hand side. Uh, looks to be maybe bathypathies or heteropathies. Can't quite tell right now, but we'll... Maybe try and get a zoom on it. Um. This one right here, it's already giving me some signals that's a, that it, that it's a it's a chrysogorgid, so it's a golden coral, um, so probably in the heavy. genus Romulogorgia, which is pretty common at these depths. One of the deeper chrysogorgids. I'm gonna float up, Tammy, and you can zoom in. And as it uh, comes into the center of the screen. Got it. I'm looking at mostly the polyps right now and how they're they're oriented and their size relative to the branches, but also the branching patterns. Romula gorgia usually has these long branches and these kind of lyrate patterns uh, uh, extending off the main axis. So that's what this appears to be. So it's the type of branching that helps you identify it visually? Branching, polyp size, color. Um, the color is usually pretty variable with deep water corals, but sometimes that's consistent, as in this species, it's usually pale or translucent, maybe slightly pink. So that's a, that's a good a good zoom on that one. Steve, do you want to stay on this rock longer or continue? No, we can continue. Okay, yep. great. So this might be kind of a rookie right. question. Like, just does just one coral consist need uh, to be there to consist of a colony, or...? Yeah. Yeah, so the, the colony is, you know, uh, yeah, a group course. of you know, genetically identical individuals. Um, usually an entire colony, you know, may have several hundreds of polyps, um, but typically if any one polyp is lost or, you know, if any several polyps are lost, it doesn't result in the death of the entire colony. So, you know, if we were to sample, say, you know, a piece of a coral colony, there's a high probability that it'll grow back and uh, won't impact it too neg negatively. Hey, Steve, do you have yep. the 4K zoom in here? Uh, I do. Yep. There. You want me to go in? Yeah, try. It. Yeah, it looks great. Can we do a burst capture here? Sure. Can we can Recording. I'm uh, floating, so. Ooh. That's cool. So each do. polyp represents an individual? Each polyp, yep, is an individual In the colony. animal, and then together they form the colony. Yep. Got it. So there's a, this brittle star here is a, looks like an Ophiocanthid, uh, which usually has very long spines on its arms. And it's, it's not a predator of corals, but oftentimes the, we think that the spines are abrasive to the colony and result in tissue loss, which is kind of what it looks like it's happening here. You can see where the arms are. It uh, doesn't have a lot of coral tissue. Yeah, so. do you wanna stop the ship or? No, we're good. No, we're good. Okay. All right, we're gonna zoom out on the 4K and keep going. So that that needs the uh, 4K captures need to be logged as a highlight. Was oh, yeah. gotcha. You got that or got it? Okay. Uh, when you get a chance, Tammy, you can zoom out a bit on Zeus. Uh, I think I. That's good. Just stay past the magnum would be great. So are we, okay. are we still recording three second bursts? Is that standard? Thank you, Tim. Yes, Steve, it was about a three second burst. It might have gone just a little long, but okay. try to keep it three. Cool. 
Steve, when you say you're zooming in with the 4K, is that when you're, that's my cue that you're going to capture? Yeah, we're going to try and get it stable in the frame and then take a burst, yeah. Got yeah. it. I'll let you know when I hit record if that helps. I'll just say recording. And then awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Tammy, I'm going to play with the lights here. For Got my minute, very so. technical. I have that up here so I can just okay. go ahead and snap that when she says that. I have it here yeah. so I can just capture okay. so you don't have to mm -hmm. keep. Yep. Try and play and jump back and forth. Not it's okay if it's entered more than more once, than too. Once. It's not a, yeah. not a problem. So, uh, yeah, let's see. Those are the mid lights off. Looks like our pilot has some fans. It says Delta Dan flies again. <laughs> <laughs> Delta Dan. And the boss likes uh, tight shots of Herc with Argus, so we try and accommodate. Okay, that was the mid lights back on. I'm gonna try and turn the uppers off. Ooh, that's yucky. And the down lights, which in theory are providing the illumination for 4K. Yeah. Okay, I'm, from what I'm seeing, we need all the lights on at the moment. I'll stop uh, forcing you to make iris adjustments. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> We've got a question about the 4K camera. Is this something new, or is this something that has always been on Hercules? This is something that Dan has been weaseling, finagling, backroom deals, <laughs> all that kind of stuff to try and get on Hercules for three, year, three years now. Um, it was originally purchased for Little Hercules, and uh, I kept squeaky wheeling it long enough. All right. So we've got a couple Snow different black Hercules. corals here. Off the right, we've got something called umbellopathies right here. Okay, I'm going to try and get it in both cameras again for yeah, you, Yeah, yeah, you want to do another burst? It's up to you. Yeah, let's do it. As, as a habit, I'm going to try and have uh, both views here. I don't want to use all my five uh, shots, but the last watch also didn't take did five. One. Yeah, so I think we got we can if you take want, up. If you want, I can touch to here a bit, oh, and you might get a little better burst image. You know what I mean? Stabilized. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go in. Uh, let me just touch here first. Sure. Well, you can go in while I'm touching. I'm watching the other camera. So what is this coral called again, Steve? Okay, so this I'm is touching something. So this is umbellopathies. It's going to bob around a little bit because it's... Uh, It's, a, it's on a stalk. Okay. Try and get a, leave a loose tether there while we're zooming. You can zoom in on uh, Zeus too if you want, Tammy. Uh, all this zooming going on. I think uh, that's as far as zoomed in as I can get in order for it to be in the frame. It's not the best image, but uh, we, we, we can just do it. Let me know if you want me to record. You know what? Uh, let's skip this one Kay. for the 4K. I got a good uh, shot in Zeus if anyone wants to grab a. Yeah, we can, we can just grab a screen cap helps. capture Herc for that. I can uh, tilt up once if you want to get the whole image. That's all right. Um, all right. That's good enough. It's a known. It's a known species uh, from this area and this depth. So, first for the dive, though. Steve's oh. over it. He saw it. He's moving on. <laughs> cool. Already, already dropped the knowledge. Gotta gotta prioritize. Although, actually, there's a really cool on on the HD. Uh, you can actually see a parasite or a predator Wait, on what? one of the branches. Yeah. Oh yeah. Look at, look at this. There's a tiny little some sort of shelled animal. That's right there on the no. one of the branchlets. Okay, uh, if everyone's happy there, sorry. Time to boogie woogie. Yep. You okay with that? Argus is uh, trying to then we've got win the race here. Our bathypathy pseudo alternado uh, over here, the species we saw just before coming on watch. Uh, it was a species that was just recently described a few weeks ago, actually. A paper came out. Uh, thought to be a different species within the genus bathypathies, but it's since been parsed out. Nice. 
It's quite common, actually. Uh, the the species was described based on collections from uh, Okeanos Explorer, um, other ships, uh, but also imagery from Nautilus during our explorations of the Pacific and Northwest Hawaiian Islands. I wonder when it's a species is newly described, is that just a morphological characterization? What it looks like? Um, is it genetic? If you want, Antonella, it's to a, make up it's a combination of things. Uh, it doesn't have to have Get all those into, uh, components, but usually the altitude. the strongest species descriptions double digits, now altitude, include a please. genetic component as well as a, a, a morphological component. But morphology is still kind of the basis for a lot of taxonomy. But um, sequencing certain parts of the genetic code of an animal does allow you to try to try to better put it as a you know within its relatives, within that family or within that genus or that uh, larger taxonomic grouping. For a minute. Well, so yeah, that's cool. I'm just gonna zoom. I've been on watch for five minutes. Right I learned about black corals. I learned about. Taxonomy. You, d you just missed, uh, I was hoping we would be in the water for this, but on Saturday it was uh, Taxonomist Appreciation Day. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I know, uh, I know, I know we didn't celebrate it with all the fanfare. It was probably due on Nautilus, but we tried. <gasps> can we celebrate it a couple of days late? I, yeah, think, we, we I think we can. Yeah. I think we can make something happen for sure. If you, um, Bring your head to 330, Antonella. I'll try and uh, stay in here. There's a lot area. of uh, what looks like debris in this area. I feel like, feels like it's... I'm not sure if these things on the ground are actually oh. natural. They look possibly okay. anthropogenic. Like, yeah. I was going to say, is that human debris? Or? Yeah, I think so. We've wow. seen a lot of it lately. I'm just going to zip over here to the right, Steve. I saw some rocks. Yep. Oh, yeah. Those are good rocks. Good rocks. <laughs> so we, we've only collected two rocks so far, so we may be on the lookout for another one, but I'll give you plenty of notice uh, if we find one that's just impeccable. I'm moving a little quicker than usual just to try and get back out up, uphill to Argus here. But I got all right. a sea star there and an urchin right there. Wow. I need to stop looking at that one and look at that one because it's less frightening. <laughs> I keep glancing up there and going, oh. The, the actually, the, the next urchin Fighting. we see, we can do a 4K grab on it because those are perfect. They're kind of, they don't move very much. Sorry, what I miss? The, the next urchin we see. Oh, Roger. We'll try and do a 4K on the urchin. Copy that. Or maybe sea cucumber. We'll see what we see. What happened to my lasers in 4K? Where'd they go? Oh, it looks uh -oh. like we got a hitch over here. Collateral damage here. Zoom in just a bit to get rid of the jewelry there for me. And the hitchhiker. Changing course back to three three zero. Ish. It's a good time to talk about kind of where our collections are going. Uh, for the most part, uh, a lot of the collections, both biological and geological, go to repositories. So the rocks that we collected, as well as some the, the biology. Uh, we'll go to museums, in this case, the rocks. Um, you want to stop the ship for a minute? Yeah. Oh, yeah, what do Bridge, we got here? Yeah. Bunch of diversity. Position. Wow. So, yeah, a lot of the biology is going to uh, Harvard's Museum of Comparative Zoology, where scientists all over the world can request specimens. It's really interesting here. It's like a bunch of these probably zoanthid covered. Yeah, we're we're uh, stopping them up, Steve. If you want to hang out, and yeah, look around on the yeah. Shop can we go a look at a couple of these? Absolutely. That's what we're here for. Dan, was this a distance thing or just a no? Oh, both. Okay. I'm anticipating uh, that we'll want to look at this rock for a moment. 
Yeah, just quick quick zooms. I don't think we're going to linger because there's nothing here immediately popping in as a sample candidate. And it's vertical, you know. Do you want to uh, take a trip around the rock? Yeah, I think so. That, you're reading my mind. Yep. Sorry, let me get my stuff together here. Can we push in on one of these kind of more yeah, ragged looking zoom in a bit, Tammy. Let's zoom in and I'll tilt down a bit. Yeah, so this this was a coral at one point. Instead, There's, is there stuff growing on that? Yeah, that? yeah. So this this colony, uh, the skeleton was a coral at one point, and what's growing on it is a type of zoanthid, uh, which is kind of very close to anemone relatives, uh, but like a colonial anemone, you could think of it almost as. But it's its own group, and uh, oftentimes they parasitize and will take over other colonies of other animals, sometimes corals, even sponges. Um, but then they'll yeah, completely grow over. You can see one. Actually, both of these are really have really dense. Um, th great. Thanks uh, for that image. We can zoom out and walk around the rock a bit. Roger. Zoom out until you see some jewelry there, Tammy. And then so it looks to me like these corals might be micro habitats, like good. where we see other organisms showing up too. The brittle stars, the zoanthids. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Sometimes, yeah, it, it depends on what type of zoanthid, what type of coral colony. But I think for the associates, it often doesn't matter if it's a if it's a zoanthid covered colony or if it's a um, uh, a coral covered colony um, you know a lot of the times they're they're just looking f to get up off the bottom into you know feeding into the currents and things uh, but the zoanthids also need that too so they will often parasitize different parts of a coral usually we see them in kind of partial partial coverage but this one we just zoomed in on was pretty well covered with a uh, new resident Come around here to the right. So there's a couple of those then there like that then. Try yeah. Touch the rock with the yeah, it's tough to see. You know, usually we can find some evidence of like in the general area what a coral colony might have been growing there. Maybe it was a bamboo or a primnoid. Um, but there's some live ones also. So we have like a Chrysogorgia golden coral there. Some black corals. Um, This like this is a detached base of a co coral. You see these all the time. They uh, basically just corals too, that have you know, fallen apart. No, not yet. Um, uh, it's the one below me, so you're getting yep. uh, top of the rock and. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see it. Yeah. Keep going around a little bit. Yeah, if you want to see anything specific, let me know. There's a there's a reasonable diversity here. Great Argus shot. Well, yeah. Yeah. A little bright, but very nice tableau. If you back off a little bit, we can do a 4K grab because there's a ton of stuff now. Yeah, I can. If I back off, you'll lose it in 4K because uh, it's, so it's looking. All right. Well, you can see in Argus where it's looking, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's looking down the. You want to do a 4K grab now, uh, Timmy? Uh, sure. Um, recording. If you want, Steve, I can, uh, if you want the good ones, I can, uh, if I touch somewhere, you'll get, you're going, what are you doing, recording video or stills? Video. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Wow. There's a fish and, uh, I've got too many cameras to look, look at. Look at that. <laughs> got this yellow <laughs> zoanthid colony. We've got, right? what kind of fish we got there? <laughs> Sorry, I lost the plot there. <laughs> you want to see the fish? I was looking at the wrong camera, too. Maybe it's some type of cuskiel. Contact. <laughs> Dan's too excited about the uh, comment about too many cameras. <laughs> <laughs> too much good stuff to look at. It's not a, not a bad problem. We just need more people to operate the I cameras. I was going to say, we need another row of the <laughs> van. <laughs> we'll get it. 
Is that the lizard eel again? No, the, this I think this is a cusk eel. Or actually... Uh, can you zoom back out on that upper camera? I'm going to start calling them that upper and lower. I don't know what upper or and lower means, though. It's too late. 4K. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, where was I? What do you want to see? Uh, we're just, yeah, oh, we're still just kind of walking around. Yeah, I've done approximately a 180. Oh, we lost our hitchhiker finally. Oh, transplanted him. For those of you that, that are just joining us, um, letting you know that our current dive is within the boundaries of the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument. Um, really cool. We are going to be, our objectives are to characterize geological and biological aspects of the seafloor on the flanks and summits okay. of the deep portion. Yeah, if, if you see any. So. Thanks for joining us. Our live chat is now live, so you're totally welcome to type in some questions for us as we're here. We'd love to interact. Hey, Steve, we've got somebody saying that um, they wouldn't be surprised to see Dumbo octopus eggs on the octocorals down here, that they were perhaps observed in a previous cruise with Jason. Have you seen anything like that? Uh, that Yes, I have. Um, so we did see some evidence of Dumbo octopod cases in uh, Paragorgia colony, um, the bubblegum coral in uh, the area of Howland and Baker, uh, the Howland and Baker unit of the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument. So that, that was observed. Yeah, I was on that cruise uh, we were using the Okeanos Explorer, but I'm sure that Jason has also sampled them from, I think, other sites in the Atlantic, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Cool. Another comment about the human debris. Um, What's the possibility of finding undocumented humid debris in this area? Maybe historical debris, archaeological interests? Do you think we'll find a shipwreck? <laughs> that is a great question. Uh, I, it's hard to say. I mean, as far as marine debris goes, it's unfortunately even areas like the Pacific Remote Island Marine National Monument, it finds its way here to these areas that are completely undisturbed by human contact. Um, as far as finding like artifacts and things like that, you know, I think uh, the main goal of the Pacific Remote Island Marine National Monuments isn't so much looking for artifacts, so much as preserving these sea mounts and these under deep underwater reefs that are essentially millions of years old. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. Thanks, Jordan. Can, can we zoom in on uh, this colony here? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Actually, yeah, we're going to check that out, too. Is that black coral? Yeah, off on the left-hand side. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay, I'm getting better. <laughs> <laughs> I want to categorize branching now. Like, is it pinnate? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Asymmetrical branching, <laughs> symmetrical branching. Yep. <laughs> I'm just happy to be, uh, be able to identify coral now. <laughs> dichotomous, semi-dichotomous. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Some of my... Yeah, my so this is what I was looking for. So Whoa. this is a planar Chrysogorgia colony. Um, I've seen something like this before. Uh, these planar Chrysogorgia are actually... It, we, we thought they were more rare, but over the past uh, several years of exploring the Pacific, we see them all the time now. 
Um, but I have sampled this before in other areas of the monument, so I'm going to pass on the sampling. But there's actually, just at the base of it, right there, there's a aplocopher and a, one of the predators of corals at these depths. So it looks like a little brown worm. You can see it right there. You want it? Yeah, you can get a tighter yeah. shot there if yeah. you want. Oh. Great. Yeah, so that's... So wait, it eats the colonies? It eats, yeah. Like it feeds it on the little... It eats the tissue of the oh. coral, yeah. Hmm. That could be why part of the base is bare. Uh, but uh, sometimes you see them up in the colony and they look like they're uh, twirled around, uh, eating polyps kind of one at a time, kinda like popcorn, I would imagine. All right, great, uh, great uh, image, thanks. Do they have, do the corals have a defense mechanism? It depends on the group. Uh, and even then, we don't really have a lot of information about um, you know, kind of what those defenses might be. Some corals are, you know, armored. They have large you know, calcium carbonate plates uh, on their polyps. Some are possibly defended chemically. Uh, some have physical defenses in the forms of spines. Um, but it's not clear what kind of benefit that conveys to the coral because we just don't know enough about you know, them and their ecology. Yeah. More questions. <laughs> yeah. So this sponge uh, that we're seeing in the 4K before. camera is actually amazing. And uh, this may be a sample candidate. Ooh. Just heads up. Roger. Because I've never seen anything like this kind of sponge. So uh, I have a request Are you, uh, list. Are you seen as well? Derby cam I will name him Squishy. Yeah. It will be mine. It you will be my it. Squishy. <laughs> I can. Uh, I got the still cam uh, up. It's yeah. it's a little hot right now because of uh, the lights, but yeah, I can adjust I that. Touch here, and you want to play with? Do you want to take the time to get a good still of it? Or? Uh, yeah, we'll get a good still, and then if okay, you want you me to turn lights off, do you? Yeah. I think just a just a maybe one of the lights. Can you, uh, Antonella, can you turn off the mid lights, please? Or no, turn, try the... That actually was better. Yeah. yeah, we got a great view right down the center of the barrel mm -hmm. on that sponge. Right there. Yep, great. Um, in terms of sample, what do you feel... Can you do like a slurp? This one's probably going to slurp right up pretty well. Can you slurp a section of it? Yeah, we can slurp it or we can uh, chop a piece off with our... Uh, Coral cutters, or yeah, I think it, I think it's going to be pretty soft. Um, yeah, slurp you can either do a, a snip and slurp or or slurp. Uh, I will leave it up to you. I th How big is it? Yeah, it just looks big compared to her. I know. Um, the see the lasers there. I guess where are the lasers at? They're right above it in the um, top right. The lasers are there. yeah right oh. here. So oh. it's about. Well, maybe that from rock to tip, it's probably maybe a meter long. So once the lasers come onto the plane here, it'll be easier to see. Mm. But these sponges, we, we sample them all the time. A small portion of it will grow back. Um, but that's all we need for the taxonomy. It's really pretty. Yep. As couple questions coming in through. Um, are we going to see many fishes, or are we primarily going to be seeing corals and sponges at this depth? We will see fishes. Uh, we will see corals and sponges. We'll see more of everything as we get shallower. Um, but for the most part, uh, at this depth, you see very few fishes. Um, it's a... It's a you know, even though there's a lot of marine snow and organic material around, it's uh, you don't see any as many fishes. You see some fishes; there some tend to be larger, you know, probably long-lived. Uh, but if we see any types of fishes, they'll probably be either eels or cusk eels, those types of things. Fish maybe, that are adapted to deep environments. Yeah, very very streamlined uh, bodies. You know, so it, they don't have to expend a lot of energy to you know, station keep. Yeah. Um, 
if there's anything in the benthos, uh, you know, on the seafloor itself, you'll probably see ambush predators like um, uh, like Bat Bathysaurus is one of them. You, they have uh, large teeth, and they'll just kind of snap at anything they see moving across them. But those are oh. more rare. Lots of excitement about this sponge. What is it called? Tammy, Tammy, you can uh, zoom in there if you want. On Zeus. Yeah. What did What did you it. just do though? You switched to a sample, or? Uh, we switched to the jar camera. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and you want to turn on flush if you want. And. Okay, people are seeing little things swimming around the sponge. Is that just marine debris, or? Yeah, it's it's probably just marine, uh, either marine snow or just sediment that's been stirred up by the vehicle. It's not anything living, uh, like animals. Yeah. Well, we just we always flush the jar and then we move to an empty one. That view is really cool. It's like straight down into the barrel. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes they have associates with them. Um, shrimp or, you know, sometimes crabs will live inside. Just the fact it's that really you call them associates, involved. Steve, like, you know, <laughs> I would call you my associates. <laughs> <laughs> Living communally, right? Yeah. Okay, you want to change to a food. different jar now? S sponge, 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 and associates. Yes. Law firms. Right now, I'm on well, Nautilus. Attorneys at law. Yeah. <laughs> sponge know. and Go associates. Yeah. <laughs> seven. Either way. Either one. Yeah. This is a, a very bouncy sponge, but it's a. This that's is not me. an easy that's collection for sure. Right. You can see in Argus where. Uh, this here says glass on sponge the, uh, back. On the brow there. Zooming in. Yeah. Here's just a little for guys. Mm. Okay. Last you one. Turn suction on. Yep. You happy just to get a lobe here, Steve? Or? Yeah, just a lobe. That would be great. Uh, what percent you got? 50 at least. 30. Okay. Now there's 50. Steve, can you talk a little bit about this collection tool? Yeah. So we are about to use a suction okay, more. hose to slurp up. A very small section of sponge here. Can you get a little bit more, please? Roger. Um, we're going to slurp up a very small section of this sponge. So you have brittle. It is. It's very soft. Uh, I think that should be plenty. Yeah. Once it comes through. Yeah. Looks like they're in the jar. Okay. That looks good. Off. Great. Thank uh, you. Switch back to the flush jar, please. So in that, in that one of those monitors up there, there's a bit of that sponge was sucked up and. Uh, for, fortunately, it leaves the all the whole sponge intact. Tammy, you can go uh, full. And that went into uh, the slurp container number one. Yes, I believe that's what I saw. That was jar oh. number one. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Great shot. Oh, uh, what is it? Is it is it a glass sponge? Yeah, you can actually see the glass like, fibers. Yeah. Like, that's that's a really nice shot. That's beautiful shot right there. Yep. So it's it's kind of like strands of uh, what are called um, spicules in sponges. So they're basically you know very uh, very elaborate glass fibers, and based on the orientation and the design and the morphology of the spicules, you can tell different species and different groups apart. So uh, that's why it's important to get a piece of it. Um, mm -hmm. so that we can do that analysis back on shore. All right, we are all set here. I think we can drop a target for NA-137-004. 004, and Steve, can you confirm this is the correct naming format if you have high pack? Um, just a second. Uh, yeah, NA-137, okay, uh, we just do dash 
dear zero zero four. Dash yeah. not underscore? Yeah. Right. Get rid of the dive number. No dive number. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Got another question coming in about sampling. Um, how do you determine the best way to sample something? And what what are the different tools that we have to take a sample? And how do you decide which tool to use? That is a very nuanced question. <laughs> um, so uh, we have a lot of different tools. You know, we, we just use the slurp sampler and suction hose to grab a little bit of that sponge, but oftentimes, you know, when we see something new, we don't know how it's going to respond to certain types of uh, manipulation. So if we were to go at that sponge with the claw, we could probably grab a bit of it. Um, but since, you know, I know a little bit about the biology and the uh, of that sponge, I knew it was going to be soft, uh, which isn't something, you know, we just have the knowledge of. It's kind of just um, a community-led uh, you know, collection of knowledge that you know, folks who do a lot of deep sea okay, you can uh, sampling you to see where accumulate <laughs> over years and years. Um, but sometimes glass sponges might be very hard and brittle. So if you were to go after that and you were to suction it up, it might just disintegrate into a billion pieces. Um, but the ones at this depth, especially that one, are um, you know, more spongy. And even though they're still made out of glass, then, then say something that was found a bit shallower might be a different species. Um, so yeah, though. depending on what the tool is, you know, if, if we're looking for a coral, for example, we may not use a suction hose because it has a, f a hard skeleton that we need to sever um, in order to suction it up or put it in the box. Um, just the same, we have specialized tools for collecting sediment um, that help us understand and keep the depth of a sediment intact. And then you can put pretty much whatever tool you want on the vehicle. Um, we've had a lot of different types of tools ranging from, uh, you know, special chemical sensors uh, to specialized, uh, you know, water sampling devices put on the vehicle from time to time that do uh, complicated, uh, <laughs> complicated uh, and very sensitive collections of things like gases, which are really hard to do on the seafloor. So, Steve, are we? Do you want to stay around this cluster or continue moving? Continue onwards. Thank you. Yep. Dan, good to go. Not good to go. We'll wait. Yep. It's a big sponge Roger. down there. Thank you. Well, thanks, Steve. That's great. Lots of different types of tools ah, yeah. and a combination of experience and knowledge about what you're collecting helps you determine the best tool for the job. Yep. Yeah, that's a really amazing sponge. That, so that, that sponge is not alive down there, but that's uh, it looks like some, some debris from shallower. Um, usually a lot of, like this sponge in particular, this is a hard sponge, so this one fell down slope, got dislo you know, lodged into this cre crevice. Um, it would not have probably fallen down slope and gotten lodged in the crevice if it was one of the soft spongy ones, but you know, it has some, some weight to it, some density. Yeah, there are some species of corals that it really helps to know kind of how they're going to respond to manipulation because if you were to touch them, some of them shatter like glass or like, um, you know, bits of, you know, chalk, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and others are very flexible and they require, you know, either a cut or a twisting to get them out of the seafloor. Cool. So we introduced our science row on this watch, but I haven't done the front row. Is now a good time? Sure. All right. Um, hello, world. Hello, world. We'll be introducing our pilots up front, our pilots, navigator, and video. Go for it. I'm Dan. I'm sitting in the Herc chair today. Antonella, Argus. Uh, can you say that louder? Antonella, Argus. Uh, I'm Tammy. I'm sitting in video right now. I'm from Seattle, Washington. And I'm Samantha Wishnack, uh, navigator, also OET's operations coordinator uh, from Monterey, California, Monterey Salinas area. Uh, although I spend, I think I've spent more time on Nautilus in the last 
few years than anywhere else. <laughs> Spend a little time in San Pedro too, don't we? Also San Pedro. <laughs> okay, we have go? our ducks in a row there. Thank you. So, Steve, we were about 70 meters off uh, or left to go on our 200 meter step. Do you want to do that 70 meters or just do a new 200 meter step? Um, but can we do 100 meter steps? Great. Let's yep. do 100 meter. Bridge, Nav. It's going to be uh, boring for a minute. We got some downhill on the uh, in front of us. Standby, Bridge. You're good. You're good. good to go? Okay. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, Bridge. Uh, can we do a 100 meter step bearing 330? What does a 100 meter step bearing 330 mean? Thank you. So what what we have to do to move across the seafloor is just you know move the ship uh, at a very you know, kind of methodical interval. So we're moving 100 meters in the direction of, what, would, what did we say, 220? 330. Uh, 330. Three, three, yeah. So uh, by moving the ship very short Come distances, down. we can make sure we already. keep Come contact with the bottom, but also make progress in a certain direction. You're uh, shallower than the I navigator. Am, I just wanted to throw. I thought people might be interested. Yeah. That's kind of cool on how it's a coordinated you effort a between faster, the ship this, uh, and altitude, you're from the ROVs. Okay, we're at DP starboard, and you can see the ship's DP system that has uh, the bearings, so you can see exactly where we're stepping to. You can see what 330 means, but if you think of a, a clock, uh, it's kind of in the... Almost. You want me to go full wide? Yep. Full wide. So, like if we had a circle 360 degrees, yeah, gotcha. compass clock, mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever uh, metaphor you want to use. I guess the compass is not a metaphor, it's what it actually is, but <laughs> <laughs> clock metaphor. Yeah, so it's like 11 o'clock. Yeah, um, but we, we try to standardize our request of the bridge just so it's very clear and consistent across watches and across uh, navigators. So we're coming up the same rock face that we just looked at. It looks like there's uh, some smaller colonies. We're still seeing a lot of these zoanthid cover covered colonies. They may have been bamboo corals in the past life, but um, I'm seeing a lot of primnoids and chrysogorgids, uh, all kinds of octocorals, sea fans in this area. Yeah, we got a couple minutes to look around, Steve. Yeah, I'll can you uh, can you zoom in on this one down here? Is that, is that one of those branching ones? That's what I'm trying to look at, yeah. See if it's one of these sparse branchers. Yeah, go ahead, Tammy. Zoom in there. Roger. The ones that look a little raggedy, uh, more ragged, usually zoanthids, but got some other sponges down here. Sorry, Steve, I missed it. What one do you want to uh, see? You're, you go up. You zoom past yep. it. Yep, you zoom past it. It's up just above this sponge here. Roger. Yeah, so it's, it's this one right here. Okay. Right. Just to zoom on this one, it's, I know it's under that overhang, yeah, so. Go ahead, tell me. Zoom in there. I'm just going to try and do a zoom and keep moving. Yep, this is, so this is a bamboo coral. Finally one that is uh, living. It looks like now we have our, uh, the coral that has been colonized by zoanthids all over this rock, but this is definitely a bamboo coral and possibly a, 
a branch or maybe just above the node. But it's, uh, it's really in this crevice, so that's why it makes it a little bumpy. Yeah, lumpy. I, I touched somewhere and it's... Uh, that's all right. We can keep going. Roger. Ready for a zoom out, Dan? Yeah, sure. Whoa. I don't know the answer to this question. Um, do we have a tool called a TBOS? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's called the T-Boss. A T-Boss. Yes. What does the T-Boss do? Important scientific work. <laughs> it is a, a critical piece of there. scientific yeah, equipment of, 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 of massive expense. Left a little. Really building it up there, Steve. Okay. <laughs> uh, T Boss is a toilet brush of science. <laughs> oh, yeah. haven't heard that one before. Used for cleaning camera lenses and other equipment underwater. Oh, yeah. it is a critical tool. It yes. is a critical tool. <laughs> yeah. It costs about 99 cents. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes you need to go low tech for high tech <laughs> problems. Yeah. Easily replaceable. Lots of spares on board. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully clean. Oh, we got some navigation questions coming in now. Uh-oh. We're about to switch out for dinner relief. All but, right. Uh, you can we'll we can put a try. pause on them. Okay. <laughs> we'll put a pause on them. Dinner sounds good. Actually, Dejana, maybe you should tell me now, and then I can do my um, research on dinner. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just saying that um, the navigation that you were sharing is very comparable to aviation as well. Ah, okay. And Very specifically cool. the effort to standardize communication and reduce incidents. So they were making the uh, analogy between aviation and I guess exploration in the air versus what you're doing down there. So they just want to give you a shout out. Awesome. Very cool. Kylie, I'm going to zoom in a little shout bit. Shout out to I'm navigation. Just, Raj, sounds good. Yeah, we do like thinking sometimes about, you know, when we talk about ocean depths and it's kind of hard to imagine, you can compare some of the deeper depths to, you know, being in a plane at different altitudes, which is yeah. kind of immediately uh, gives you a, a bigger visual of, of what it's like to be down here. So uh, can you zoom on, on high back for a second when you have a yep. chance? So I think we're about to start marching north, right? Oh, zoom out on high back. Sorry. Yeah, zoom out. <laughs> you don't want to see the ship extra, extra large? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're about to head north. Um, okay. Continuing up slope. Waypoint three. You want it even farther out, Steve? No, that's great. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to get a What's bearing on? on the new waypoint. So, uh, yeah, we'll kind of move north, and <laughs> since we're kind of Raj. going to be crossing a bit of a knife's edge ridge here, um, while we're crossing it and it gets the slope gets less intense, we'll kind of look for sonar targets along the way. Uh, so rocks and things to. Uh, either look at or sample, but. Roger. I think in that case, um, our next step, will slightly change the heading then to, to have the ship a little offset along the knife's edge to have the vehicles then um, following right along. Yeah, that looks good. We're about 50 meters off our current step. And I'm gonna head out to dinner. Enjoy. Ooh, what heading, Dan? Raj. To come down on Delta. So we got our first biology collection. Raj. Right? First sponge. We did our first sponge. We did a rock. Like. We did a rock. We got a water sample at the beginning of the dive. I learned about a very important piece of equipment on Herc or that we use, which is the T-Boss. I'll go look. Say it again. I'm trying to think I can use that in everyday language now. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, uh, actually we can pull that up here. We just pop, plop over to this tab and we have uh, depth here. Actually, if you if you open up this link, if, do you have a, uh, let me, let me hum come over there. I can probably pull it up for you. Yes. Oh. No, absolutely not. <laughs> it would have been easier if it just came up. <laughs> and then we can switch back and forth? Okay, cool. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, the red book? Yeah. Is there any way I can put it over to this screen, maybe? Yeah. Uh, Less than 10%. Dealer's choice. Okay. No, I don't. I can start a timer. Uh, yeah. Garage. I can st stopwatch. Ready now? Yep. Go. <laughs> Five, 20, 25, 26 seconds. I'm just doing a rate of ascent test there, back row. And we're going to probably uh, drop a weight. Okay. Think. Those two rocks are pretty dense then, huh? Those two potatoes. <laughs> what are we at now? We at a minute yet? No, 54, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1 yeah. minute. Yeah, so I got 5 meters, but I went off of altitude and not depth. But it's uh, like half as much as I should have. You wanna? Are you good with grabbing? Uh, we all right to drop a weight here, Steve? I think we can drop a weight, sure. If you've got, yeah, patience, I can. Uh, I can do it. Go for it. Does it matter which one, which set? Uh, does not. Dealer's choice. I need that bench. Thank you. Uh, the low-hanging fruit is probably the not in front of the sexton camera there. Raj, but that's precarious. It's easier than an armpit grab, for me at least, I don't know. Okay, you, Raj. You wanna see the other one? Am I allowed to bend this forward again or is it gonna break? Whatever you want. Ooh, but you sure? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bob actually Whoa. went, look, it won't break it. <laughs> and then it broke it. <laughs> <laughs> I've fixed it twice now, so that's why I asked. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing it. Okay. Oh, Good evening, Eric. You want me to bubble you? Yeah, please. What do you want? Nav, did you get the uh, plan from... Can you from come uh, on video? I think she is. I'm uh, racked back. Oh, she's no. not. Sorry. You have me. Steve, in? is that who I hear back there? Yes. Oh, that's the 4K? Yeah, well, this is what I've heard. I Raj. Guess. Zoom out if on you me. bring the arm across in the... Um, yeah, that's the 4K. Uh, gotcha. Sorry. When they do okay. the, after they do this, yeah, we're going to really nice head uh, here, trying to follow what we think is the top of the ridge. If you bring the right. arm across in the um, middle of the so 4K, you'll be about that far from the front of the vehicle. Um, okay. Shifting the ship a little bit that way to try and get 
more Argus on that trajectory. Does that sound right? That sounds pretty good, yeah. Okay. I, I don't know where the top of the ridge is precisely, so we'll just try to Can keep the hard bottom me? in contact and oh, follow us on our targets. Sorry. Okay, sounds good. Garage. Uh, trunk and bubble. There, you got three cameras on it now. Thank you. Bash the sextant camera a couple times, that'll let you know where you're at. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Please don't. Yeah, Raj. <laughs> don't worry, it's, <laughs> it's titanium, you can't break it. Hey, <laughs> Kai. Are you okay with pilot cam too? Oh geez, come on man. Uh, don't worry, I wouldn't do that too. Thank you, I have one friend. For now. But you could have yeah. an audience. Have yeah. a Colt Let's Lake following. Halt. Ten, do you want to Also, I will take advice okay. if you have it. Uh, nope. Raj. The only advice I would have is to touch it once with the jaw before you open it, and then you'll know where, you're, where you are. Should make, uh, that's I I you usually see me do that. Just like that? Yeah, then you know you can get it. Okay. Beautiful. Might have to lift it up Oops. just a little to get it out from behind the rubber lip when you Raj. Now, now that you got the rope where you want it. Okay. the opposite of what I want, Raj. I, I can't do it in bubble. I yeah, gotta it's look like there. I like physically cannot do it in bubble. If I look at bubble, I gotta stop moving the arm. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Oh yeah. You want one or two? Because I got one. Let's what, let one go and just let it go. See what happens. Yeah, Raj. Just let it go. Goodbye. Bye. Okay. Do we float now? I forgot all about utility. That's better. Now yeah. we're up to the lightning speed of eight meters a second, which is a good one to note in case we go uh, lights out. Eight meters a second? Yeah, maybe closer to 10, so. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to stow the arm? Yeah, you can stow that weapon and well, uh, Go look at something scientists are interested in. I should be good to rack back out now. Do you leave power to it? No, oh, I've been killing it. Turning it off. Thank you. Raj. Do you want your DVL reset? Sure. Okay to do it now? Yes, ma'am. Ah, oh, that's better. So I had, uh, yeah, eight or nine meters a minute positive there and Let's try a quick uh, 
Auto depth now takes. Auto depth's going crazy. What's happening? Okay. Come down on my delta. Yeah, right. These are great pillow tubes. Yeah, that's pillow better. Tubes. Kylie, now auto depth is taking uh, 20 to 30 to hold it. Okay. You said they were pillow tubes? Can you guys Some ready of them. to go? Some of them are just yeah, pillow tubes. Okay, ready? What's the difference? We're, ready. Oh, we're going up along this ridge. When they're kind of like. That sound good? I have to pick a tubular. Yeah, what pillows. direction should I face? <laughs> uh, I guess it kind of makes sense. Okay. Let's try, uh, <laughs> Mr. Mazeltek right, says, I'm looking uphill. Uh, now. Three, five, four? What do you feel like? I'm looking zero ninety zero to go. You just want to That's go what the Mazeltek says. If you want to go immediate uphill. Oh, to get right on top of the ridge? What if we kind of just go in between to kind of work our way up and onto the top? Is that right? Work for you? Like a zero yeah. four five? Yeah, it works for me. All right. And then once we get where we think we're on the top, um, we'll start heading more northerly. Sure. Okay. Zero four five. Let's do a zero four five. Let's do that for, um, how's the hundred meter sound? Sure. Okay. That's uh, Argus and Herc looking zero four five. Got it. Bridge nav. Can we get a one zero zero meter step bearing zero four five? Correct, thank you. Just a reminder to our audience members that if you are watching, you should be able to toggle between cameras or choose the quad view through nautiluslive.org. If you're having trouble seeing that, try refreshing the page and you should be able to switch between cameras to answer your question. I'm gonna change the range on the sub bottom to 30. Roger. I tend uh, not to use it as much, A, because I can't see it, and B, because I'm an old man and that number is way easier to read. Yeah, well, I, I use it. <laughs> but if you were to reference it and things changed, I'd want you to know. I do look at it when I panic, and that one's giving see me this? a number I don't yes, like. Yes, too. Yeah. That's what I miss. Hey, Science, did I miss a sample number? <laughs> After I asked it and you said it, it was like, that's kind of... Erin, so Erin, did you, what did you just ask? Um, did I miss a sample number there? What, run, uh, what sample were you guys on? We have four samples. Oh, was the last one numbered? Four. Four. Four, okay, cool, and I'm good. It's pretty amazing that our boulder at the beginning was like really the highlight for. They had a pretty good boulder recently. Oh, you did? Oh. Or they did? They did. Okay. I was well, watching we're down the I somehow nice. Not we got sure a, how a I nice did that. sponge. Yeah. Okay. Close up. That's a good. We got a cool glass sponge right. of our time. Oh, great. Which way do I gotta go? I gotta. That number always gets me. I gotta go this way. Uh, we're gonna make everyone dizzy in the back row. We have to do some tether housekeeping here. Oh, Don't look at the 4K. Uh, it's spinning. Should <laughs> 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 we all just start making noises? Uh? Everybody. <laughs> Getting so dizzy. <laughs> That's how our past couple days felt like it. We're just making sure everyone can tell. Oh. Oh. 4K. So, so uh, okay. no. to try to not look at that, I'm gonna talk. Uh, we're just going zero four five for a while to get um, Argus and Herc up a little bit more directly on top of the ridge, and then we'll start tracking towards the north. Sounds good. Great. How far are we from waypoint three? What's what's waypoint that in the three. in the um, uh, Argus view? The shadow you see is just a rock. It looked like a big fish. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. I saw it earlier. It I looked shark-like, but then yeah, I was I scared wish. to say something because I thought it was just a rock. Uh, just again, about 500, 520 meters. Okay, cool. I see. It's going to be pretty flat. Th there's a rock, Kylie. Rock. Oh, wow. That's weird. <laughs> can we get a, a, little rock there. Can we get like a zoom a on that, it's actually? Uh, it's a very a angular rock. rock. It's a rusty rock. Yeah, uh, it's very rusty. Dan, they would like a zoom if you're, if sure. you're able. 
I don't think it's a rock. No. This one, we've been treasure. seeing a, a lot of debris around here, yeah. so it looks... Go ahead, tell me. Got it. Yeah, some sort of metal rock. debris. Is it treasure? Can you open it? We can. <laughs> Are we allowed Is to? Is that a science? <laughs> Is the heart of the ocean that inside? <laughs> Is that a sword? No. <laughs> I want it to be a sword. That wow. looks pretty cool. Yeah, cool. we've been seeing a lot of strange debris around here. Just like put, have a little peek in there. Hope it's like not someone a slowly tossed things over. Looks uh, almost like wood. Yeah, it does look like wood with maybe a bit of metal. Yeah. Artifacty. A, a little too rusty. <laughs> All right, I think we're good. Thanks. Roger. Zooming out. Kylie, I'm going to zoom you in just a little bit on Argus to get those glares out of there. Sure, yeah, if you can. Yeah. It takes quite a bit. I know. I don't want to go too far. I have to retrain my eyes to look at the utility cam. Oh, yeah. So, like, I've never looked at before. Hardly yeah, ever. in general, yeah. <laughs> me, me either, yeah. I miss my zoos. You, do you want this here? Or does Antonella want that there? Uh, Antonella probably wants it there. We pulled up the... Um, Still cam? Yeah. Raj. You can okay. trade if you want. Well, no. she'll be up in a minute, so I'll just leave it how she had it. That's no fun. I know. <laughs> I, know. I, almost, I almost came up and intentionally <laughs> reset everything. Is this how you, is this how you train <laughs> <I> people? <do. laughs> I know. <laughs> just a dose I, of medicine. I will train you in the ways <laughs> to enjoy everybody. <laughs> You know what they really like? When you switch the beacons out at the last second. <laughs> That's what they really like. Well, that wasn't my fault. <laughs> I was working at, I was working under instructions there. Are you referring to the beacon shell game that never ever ended? Yes, yes. And oh, I, that was painful. Uh, my last recollection was you standing there with two beacons on our kids <laughs> <laughs> and laughing. I'm pretty sure you were laughing. It's <laughs> like, so guess which one they are. <laughs> we're going to roll the dice. Maniacal. <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh, you should see the story that Trevor wrote about that. Oh my God, it makes oh, my head hurt. I have the hurt. email where you kept very careful track of like everything that, that that went on. It was some good note taking. It's a lot, like a page and a half of the Beacon Shell game. <laughs> we were troubleshooting uh, a very rare failure of. We had two bulkheads fail. Polynomial. Sorry. Sorry. You're gonna come down and delta since we're stretched out. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if you got 5.3 or 24 under you. For what? Uh, that I think 23, 20-ish is the more accurate number. I think so. So I'm, I'm guessing that the top of the ridge is going to look very much like that flatter sedimented bit. Is that what you're after, science? Um, I think we are after getting to the next area, no matter um. what. Um, I mean, you mean going around the side instead of going over the top? Um, well, we're just kind of working our way oh, up to the top. Can we get a zoom on this, but if possible, on this sponge? So you can get a zoom in two cameras. Ooh. You have a one back there. You can zoom whenever you want. It's in this camera in front of me here. And then uh, Tammy can zoom on the Actually, three one. cameras. Oh, well, yeah, you can get a still of it, too, if you want. Oh, nice. Well, that's beautiful. Gorgeous. Looks like a smaller version of what was collected earlier. And what kind of sponge is this? A glass a sponge, one. I think. <laughs> Stocked glass sponge of some kind. 
zoom out just a bit, Tammy. Oh, there it is. Oh, there right there it is. It. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> that was a really nice shot. <laughs> okay. You want the porch light on? Sure. Let's try it. I haven't tried it yet. Yeah. Can you believe that? Lights, camera. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's porch. Very bright. Yeah. Hey. Wow. You're bigger than I thought you were. Zoom in a bit more if you want. Nope. Doesn't look <laughs> good on. Oh, it's 4K. <laughs> that's a great, is that the 4K? That's the 4K, Holy yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah, that's I got amazing. too close. I'm impressed, officially. Okay, Megan, resuming the conversation. Um, right now we were coming up a little bit more on the ridge, but if it's more important to make progress towards waypoint three, we could just start chugging that way. Um, Raj. I think that if we can keep chugging that way, but still be looking at somewhere where there's rocky outcrops, that would be preferable. Okay. But if it's going to take us way off course, then... No, no, I think you are looking at rocky outcrops. I think yeah. going up on the ridge is going to get sandier, so I think at this point it might be better for us to track towards the, towards the northwest. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, is that okay for you guys? Works okay. for me. All right. Porch is coming off. Roger. Uh, I don't know if you heard, but Tammy's got dim dinner relief. This is Ryan. Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Hello, how are you doing? Good, how are you doing? Good. All right, so we're going to change bearing to 343. 343, three, three, right. And we can go forever. Do you want to, do you like the speed or you want to do something different? Uh, I think Steve was happy with the speed, so. Keep it at that. All right, I'll put in a step. 343 three seems to be. Are we going point 0.2 or point 0.3? Point 0.2, I think they've been doing. All right, that sounds good. Bridge nav. Can we change, um, have a step one zero zero meters bearing three four three? Yep, three four three. Careful, I got it, I got it. <laughs> smash, <laughs> smash. <laughs> Bull, China shop. Okay, what's going on? Are you I don't know, I think you're floating up, so. Okay. I'm just gonna, I know Tammy punched me in, so I'm gonna punch out for a second. Uh, 343 heading, okay. I believe. Um, I'm, we're we were both starting to turn that way. Um, okay. And I, I think science can, or, na or nav can handle the rest. Yeah, um, so we uh, did a little bit to move more onto the top of the ridge, but it started to get quite sedimenty, and the, the next waypoint um, was kind of more of a priority, so we just readjusted to start heading directly towards that waypoint, uh, 343. Okay. Three. Uh, there's a 100 meter step in and 0 0.2 knots. Okay, 343, three. roger that. And I'm coming down on my delta. Okay, sounds good. Um, and that. So 343, three, it looks like, is going to send me a little downhill, right? It, well, it looks like you might track along the edge of the ridge. Okay. Um, and we hope that will be a little more rocky to look at than. We had some nice rocks, but I think the whole top okay. of this thing is we sedimenty. Do have Actually, I lied. I'm coming up on my delta yeah, because your of the Argus bottom. altitude is 10 meters I right now. I saw that. <laughs> uh, so uh, right now we're downhill, but we'll yeah. see how it goes. So I'm going to come up for you. Raj, so thank you. you. Thank I'll you. come up slope, but sort of, I don't know. I'll do what I can. Well, it looks like there's some nice rocks a little bit upslope from you there. Mm, nice rocks. Something to look at. So that might not be a terrible thing at all. Yeah, no problem. Um, this looks great. Dan had the, has the 4K here, so just FYI. He has the 4K where? Right here. This is the Herc Zeus picture, and that's the 4K picture. So you're, you're looking down <laughs> from above. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's important to know. Uh -huh. <laughs> if you're flying by that, cool. then it's not right. Thanks. <laughs> not Thank normal. You. <laughs> <laughs> that was good to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
Seems like you can come up on your altitude now. Coming up, yep, gotcha. Good call. You can come up on your altitude or come up on your depth. Both would be good. <laughs> I'm impressed that he could fly off the 4K and have the Zeus right there. That's a, I'm, my brain's bending a little. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to ask you in this case just to come around off that 343 heading and yeah. just follow our uh, Herc where it needs to be to keep you in a safe spot. Gotcha. Nav, can you do me a favor while I'm not doing this and just trace out what you think the hill, the slope looks like here? I think it's like this. Um, well, yes, this would be directly upslope. Okay. Um, the feature we're following is a ridge that goes in this direction. Okay. All right. So you're on the kind of the west side of it near the top. Yeah. And we want to track up along that ridge. Okay. And the ridge itself is the one that's at 343. Three, okay. Whereas the slope would cross cut it. Okay. This is just a very awkward point in the bathymetry to keep the vehicles like close to the bottom. Um, okay, Argus out looks great. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I feel like you've come off that ridge a little bit and I can do a little better. Okay, this is better. We're getting there. <laughs> so many views. <laughs> so many views. We can change them. We don't have to leave them how he likes it. So, yeah, um, I want to try it. Oh, okay. I usually like to try whatever the last pilot leaves me just yeah. because that, like, Gives me a chance to... New perspective. Yeah, because mm -hmm. sometimes they're right. Yeah. It's not common, but... <laughs> <laughs> there is a bat, bat's chance. <laughs> so... <laughs> Do you think we could get the Argus view without some of those kind of... I can't hear who is yeah. ever speaking. Yeah, oh, Raj. Sorry. That's about the... Sorry, Ryan, I'm sorry. Like that? Yeah, that's a little better. Raj. Thank you. Ryan, feel free to swap my hand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna come down a bit. Tilt, okay, yeah, it looks like we're I'm, sort of, sorry. Oh yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say my camera was tilted full down too, so if, if that gives you extra perspective. Gotcha. Okay. You're actually more like out in front of me a little bit. I don't know. Never mind. Ignore me. <sighs> yeah, I'm pretty far out in front and the side, we're sort of now starting to be on a better sort of side hill thing. Yeah. It's working. It's working. Ryan, like, yeah. just a heads up, I'm going to change the Argus lights to see if um, it makes those concentric rings a little different or better or something. Those concentric Sounds rings good. are very characteristic of the mini Zeus from what I remember. That one sound, seems better though without that one a little bit. Like that was with and that's without. Oh yeah. Any, any We can leave it like that for a little while. See if anybody notices. Getting a little stretched out here. Raj. Got too ambitious.
Oh, um, we pitched a plate. Oh, that's right. I saw that. Okay, Raj. That was your doing, right? That was. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's what you were doing when it came up. I'm like, did I miss a sample? Oh, that's uh, why. Oh, we just pitched a plate. All good, because I was still trying to figure out what was going on. My bad. Not your I bad. I didn't understand the context, because we had <laughs> had the manipulator out. <laughs> but it, I just came on dinner relief, so I said, I don't know if she missed a sample. I don't sample. even know what you're talking <laughs> Yeah, all good. It all makes sense now. Downslope looks pretty cool. I know. I really like being on the edge of these like really dramatic features. I know. It's and what's like, right there. It's a little scary, like in a weird <laughs> sort of way. It just always looks like you're gonna fall right off the edge. I know. Dong dong dong. So sharp. Oh, got some new people joining and wanting to get information about what we're doing, where we're at, and what our objectives are. Well. This dive is going to explore the deep western platform of the Palmaya Atoll along 7.7 kilometer transect. Our primary objectives are to characterize geological and biological aspects of the seafloor in this area. Um, approximately between 3,500 oh, meters and 1,700 meters deep. For the drama. <laughs> for your own personal drama. Yeah, just for my own personal enjoyment. It's really great. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. We're just so no worries. <laughs> you do Enjoy you. the drama. <laughs> Enjoy that. Yeah, look at this. So we're currently within the boundaries of the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument. Um, Oh, hey, Dijana's on this watch, right? Yes. Yeah. Hey, Dijana. Shout out. <laughs> is that Gabby up there? Yeah, it is. I always wanted to be on watch with you. See? And now we'll have these magical moments. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Few but special moments. It's so good. It won't last long, but we'll enjoy it. But we'll enjoy the moments when they happen. What was feeling dramatic? Tell us about it. Um, I just really, so the 4K is sort of looking down the face of this drop off into nothing. And if you look at the Zeus, it's just kind of like, okay, there's a slope there. But if you look on the 4K, it just drops off and it's very high drama. Um, yeah, it just turns to black. And there's this feeling that like you might fall off, but you're not going to. It's just very cool feeling. Ah, oh, we're positively buoyant. We're not going to fall. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's, it's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, I am going to fall, but you're... <laughs> but Herc will... <laughs> Facts. <laughs> I, from what I remember, Herc's pretty well attached to, uh, to Argus here. <laughs> We've tested this and if, and if one of us falls, we both do. <laughs> but, so but for a few beautiful seconds, Herc will just stand there in suspended motion. <laughs> <laughs> I can't... I heard Steve, but I can't hear Steve. <laughs> Raj. How about, how about now? Uh, uh, right. Oh. How about now? Okay. Uh, keep your eye out for any loose rocks, I think. All right. That's a fun game. <laughs> 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 the loose rock game? Well, there might be some things here we can zoom in on the way. Uh, Steve, are you? Do you see where the transect is? Are you happy with? Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't want to be in the sediment, just kind of on the crest of it. Yeah, so I think the this top is perfect. looks kind of lame. So yeah. I like, I like the drama. Yeah, personally. it's very dramatic. <laughs> yeah. Nice uh, lava flows and pillows and things here. Oh, we've got a shout out to everyone who is geeking out over the 4K cameras because <laughs> they are too. They want to know when it's going to go out. Right, right now, it's nothing. They're, it's going to look the same as her right now. <laughs> but they're out there. They're like, yay, 4K camera. <laughs> it's going to be very as I come We want to see <laughs> what they want. Oh. oh. And there it is. <laughs> I will give the people what they want. 
4K camera is now going out. So you can enjoy the drama too. Wait. It's, it's, it's over. Sorry. You just have to wait for it. <laughs> wait. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I think there's some drama. I can see it in Argus. There's drama. It'll be dramaful. Like, look down there. Crazy. Ah, oh, Samantha's back. All right, going off. Have fun, guys. Bye. Bye. Well, we'll, we'll get... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't know what the people want anymore. Three, four, three. Would you like me to get that heading back? Wait, I have it. I'm almost at that heading. We're good now. Yeah. I had drifted a bit and I, I'm back. Raj. You know what direction we're going. Three, four, three, four, three. <laughs> yeah, you can zoom in on those. Sure can. Oh. You jinxed me, Gabby. So it looks like we've got uh, maybe heteropathies and uh, umbellopathies. Black. Yeah, telestrate. Yeah, oh, telestrate. Please. Yeah. So the umbellopathies is the one with the brittle star on it. Oops. Uh, wait, I'm trying to give the people what they want. I'll try, <laughs> try that again. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Looks oh, I good. I thought you were going to telestrate it, so I was going to. Oh, I. Too late. If you're sending you Telestrator your out, I can redo that. <laughs> it's never too late to telestrate. So is Telestrator going out by default? No. Oh, okay. Don't worry about it then. There's a fish, though. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. Oh, okay. right there. Yes, 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 yes. It's like a little there worm. I'm, I'm hoping it's another one of those lizard eels. I mm -hmm. want to see one of Hi. those again. <laughs> Just keep on rolling. Keep on rolling the, the moves. Yep. I'm just adjusting my mic now. I haven't been on SPL at all. I'm so sorry. Uh, <coughs> I was also just talking Nobody was about hearing SPL. my witty banter. <laughs> 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 so, Steve. Cool. Question coming in. What time rolling. is it? Rolling. Yep. What time is it? Time right now is... Uh, dinner. <laughs> it's dinner time, people. It's 5.45. Yeah. Can five I get a Zoom video? Oh, 5.45 Hawaiian time. We are going by Hawaiian time, and so it's 5.45? 5.45. All right. Hawaiian time means we'll get there when we get In there. There you go. operational <laughs> times, we actually use universal time code, UTC. It is... Can you get any tighter? 034537. Yep. That's the goal. Is that Tammy? Thanks there for yeah. the UTC for operations. Unfortunately, oh. he doesn't seem to want to give us a profile. He's a little yeah. camera shy. I yeah, try I think, to zoom uh, a little bit more, but it's going to be bumpy. Ooh. Yeah, it will be. It's. I'm not super set up for... I could ooh, be, though. Ooh. Oh, he almost gave us a side. Might be. I'm just kidding. Oh. You're fine. I gave uh, uh, Ryan oh. permission. Oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. Push I in. I had to do it. <laughs> so Oops. is that a okay. lizard eel is coming in here? What about no. lizard eels? <laughs> and is this one of them? No, I don't know. It, it looks kind of like a. I don't think it's a halosaur. I think it looks like a. Maybe a. I want to say a. It's, 
I don't know, maybe a Sanafa Brinket, but it looks a little different. So cut Oh, there's his profile. We got him. Oh, we got go. him. We got yep. him. I'm zoomed all the way too. Nice. Oops. Fish are definitely the thing that I can't help you all very much okay. with. Okay, go ahead. I gotta keep an eye on the vehicles now. Yep. <laughs> got a little sidetracked. I am massively zoomed in Argus, so don't Excellent. freak out. Okay. <laughs> Please. Panic. Don't freak out. <laughs> oh, well, what am I going to do next then? I <laughs> oh. don't want you to freak out here. Well, then where should we go to freak out? <laughs> Somewhere else. <laughs> More questions coming in here. Most importantly, question, um, what did y'all have to eat for dinner today? And then second one is, what conditions dictate whether the lava flow is sheet is a flow sheet or a bouldering hmm. presentation? Those are wildly different questions. Yeah. yeah. So we've got, um, I can answer the dinner one, and I'm going to need some help from my friends down on the science aisle for the uh, lava flow question. Yeah, I got you, Dijana. You got me on that one? <laughs> yeah. So for dinner, I had some rice and veggies. Pretty, uh, pretty standard pretty stuff. Pretty standard, yeah. No, I did too. <laughs> you know, throw in a chicken breast there. Um, yeah. That's about that. Followed up with a bowl okay, of fruit. To the bottom, Delish. I'm not changing anything. Just look yeah, at Yeah, so some of that altitude. is not so much the bottom as it is the side, right? Yes. Yes, Raj. But I guess it's all just, the bottom? I'm looking yeah, at totally. it. Yeah, totally. Gotcha. Just I saw at you it. looking. I was yeah. looking at you looking. <laughs> he said, what are you looking at? <laughs> Okay, Dijana, what was the second question? Can we pose uh, you up this way a little bit more? Yep. What conditions will tell us if we're looking at a lava flow that's a sheet or bouldering? Okay. Um, well, lava flows, specifically underwater, you tend to get these nice pillow basalts, and they can sometimes um, kind of continue Ooh, on what's this? flow um, see this in here? tubes. Oh, what is that? That's interesting. You know so what I think that is? It's a black this coral. This is likely just one one flow, right? On top of oh, maybe some older ones. Back on here. And it's just covered in sediment, so it looks as though they're just separate boulders currently. Oh, got oh, it. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Um, go for zoom video, and then maybe we can try it on the 4K if you want. Sure. Oh, you kind of do got it on the 4K. Oh, it's beauty. It's a black coral. You can zoom a little more. Is that good? Yeah, that's great. Okay, um, I'm going to try and get it on the 4K. Okay. We'll see how that goes. Ooh, 4K yeah. fans don't have a ton of time, but we'll see what mm -hmm. we can do. I'm watching right. you. <laughs> What's that? I'm watching you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Steve, they want to know if that's a tunicate. That thing we just zoomed in on okay, is a black you're coral. Okay, lined up. All right, pushing in. Go for it. I can still get it. I can still get it. Let me know if you want me to zoom in or out. Okay. No, you're good. All right, let's do a burst. Recording. It's amazing how that entire animal can be attached with that small base. I know. Yeah. With so much current around it. Well, okay. not right now, but. Is All that right. it? Zooming out. Yeah, it's about a three second burst. Okay, cool. Let's move on. Got it. Nice job, team. Ooh. It's a beautiful flower right here, too. Um, going back to that fish, Steve, they want to know if it's the ill that makes slime? Or is that animal that makes slime in the deep sea, is that an ill? And if it is, was that one of them? Uh, so I think they might be referring to hagfish, right? Yeah. Probably, I'm guessing, yeah. So that that is a totally different group of animals, uh, jawless fishes. This Sorry one to interrupt, are you interested in this coral at the bottom of the 4K screen right now? Uh, I can't tell what it is, it's pretty it light and wispy. Oh, I see. Bottom very center. bottom. There. Oh, yeah. What do you oh, think? yeah. No, no, we just we saw it already. That's Old news. Um, umbrella path. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. There's another fish coming, though. Oh, great. Ooh, more fish. What are you? Same, same. 
Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> got it. Oh. <laughs> you got that? <laughs> <laughs> no, once more, please. <laughs> He's going to get startled really soon. Yeah. No, this is a... Uh, this is going to freak him out. This, is a, this is, looks like a cutthroat eel. A cutthroat eel? Yeah. yeah. Oh, there he goes. Sorry, dude. Like, what in the world? We good with him? All good. Great oh. shot. Oh. Thank you, Steve. Hagfish was the word they were looking for. Yes, hagfish. So yeah, very slimy producers, um, but not these are not the same. We occasionally see hagfish out here, but they're not very common. Oops, sorry. Scratched it. it. Ooh, some questions about volcanoes. Um, have you seen any volcanoes on the seafloor? Oh, yes. That's a great question. So all these rocks that we're looking at or have been looking at um, are volcanic rocks, right? So <laughs> Palmyra and the surrounding seamounts are all volcanic features um, that were active at one point in time. So we kind of are. They're not necessarily active anymore, but those are the rocks that we're after, volcanic ones. There you go. So all the rocks that we're seeing are volcanic rocks. Yeah, and actually, if you go back and look at some of our highlights on Nautilus Live, you can see some underwater volcanoes, um, particularly we call them black smokers. And I believe there's some from last year uh, with Ocean Networks Canada. So they'll be able to see some of the actual, and they're smoking, and they look really cool in the water. And you'll see all the tube worms and everything. It's cool. Those are my favorite. That's my specialty. Deep sea hydrothermal vents. Yes. Yep. I need somebody from the back row to go down and put up, make up a plate of dinner for uh, Kylie, please. I can do that. Okay. Thank you. Is there anything in particular? Anything? All right. Only, only one. Only Roger. one carb. That's it. <laughs> that doesn't count. So, uh, so it looks like there might be a, like a, a small saddle. Uh, it doesn't go down too much, but it's probably going to be more sedimented over the next couple hundred meters here. So if it turns out it's just going to be more sedimenty, we can move a little bit more quickly if we need to towards waypoint three. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, no worries. Sorry, I didn't think of it. No, I'm... It's okay. Um, ROV pilots in the front row, we have some questions for you. Is now a good time? Bring it. All right. I'm sure you've gotten this one before. How does one become a pilot? Uh, yeah. And did you have any prior experience or did you learn using these remotely operated vehicles, Herc and Argus? I learned on these vehicles. Kylie, did you learn on these? Yeah, I okay. started as an intern. I would say the way one becomes an ROV pilot is there seems to be as many paths to becoming an ROV pilot as there are people who become ROV pilots. And so it's like very much dealer's choice. Um, and we all just kind of find our ways here. But like the most obvious one is um, to get an associate's degree in like um, an engineering field, um, especially like mechanical, hydraulics, or electronics, or something like that, and get to work on a system in industry. Um, but I don't know anyone who's done that. I did that. Uh, did you go to industry? I'm in industry. I'm hello. Oh, I would have called this. I would have called this research <laughs> in academia. But oh, yeah. Raj. Um, um, well, I did work for Teledyne. Uh, yep. There you go. Yeah. And uh, Dan did that. I think. Oh, something, right. Some something akin to that. He went to Schilling, I think. What does industry mean? So industry would be something like um, ROVs are used in oil and gas. They're used in nuclear power. They're used in mining. Um, so they're used all over the world. Um, and, uh, so finding your way into one of those fields can be really good. Um, but it's really about studying a technical field and getting good at it and then getting a job and you learn on the job. 
Um, on the and job. it's really hard. Like you have to want to do it. Um, you have to keep pushing the whole time. Um, I am going to let this be. Oh, it's it just looks so good. Is this a solitary hydroid? I so uh, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I think it's a serianthid uh, anemone. So like a sediment dwelling tube anemone. But I was hoping to get a zoom in some way. Can I zoom in the 4K? Okay. Whoa. You're going to get a change of pilot right now. Okay. I'm in full auto, so you might lose that. Or the autos are better for zooming than I am, which no. is really embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Uh, science, I'm also holding the ship while we do the pilot swap out. Okay. okay. Yep. Cool. This might be a cool one to explore. Um, they're curious if this is new seafloor or have eyes been on this seafloor before? Or is this brand new seafloor for human eyes to behold? This is brand new seafloor. Yep. So you got that. This is, we are not covering area that's been previously documented by cameras or human eyes. This is all new seafloor that we're exploring. All right, I'm going to go super tight on the Syriantha. Let's see what, what kind of magic we can make happen here. Yeah, that's pretty tight. This <laughs> looks amazing, <laughs> those tentacles streaming down slope. Yeah. So how much of it do you think is in the sand, Steve? Uh, most of the body. Wow, OK. Yeah. More we, than we've, said, we've collected these before, actually, um, but yeah, in fact, I think we collected them last year. There Is it go. a soft tube all the way into the sand? All right, yeah, you can see it now. Wow. Yep, you can see its body there and sediment. Wow, the zoom in th on this thing is like a microscope. It's fantastic. Yeah, the, unfortunately, these things uh, don't collect very well. They, uh, they tend to, they're very gelatinous, first of all, but they... Um, will eject all their tentacles uh, if they're being stressed out. But we have collected them, so we know something about them from this area. What do you mean eject both their tentacles? Their tentacles will pop off. Oh. Yeah. They, uh, sometimes it's a d defense mechanism uh, they might use to scare away predators or it's something they do to, you know, preserve the, the viscera, you know, the, the larger body. Tentacles are kind of just accessories for feeding. What what do they make their tube out of? Uh, it's usually mucus or some sort of, yeah, similar thing like that. Mucus or uh, sediments, sedimented mucus. All right. Uh, looks good. Continue on. Uh, we've Continue. got to thank you for that 4K footage. Bridge Did that go out? Are we sending that off to the beach now? Uh, we can continue with yes, a so one zero zero meter stop that. bearing three four three. Hey, there's a uh, might Sorry, be a what was that bearing? one of these three, four, three. Uh, three, four, beaked three, whale three, scours three, right. in the upper left corner coming in oh. to uh, Herc right now. You have it. In Argus. Should I check with you? Good to go, Dan. There you go. Cool. Oh, that's whales. Whale scars? That's, uh, yeah, that's what we've been calling it uh, over the course of several years. Kind of the beaked whales that dive down yep. will create a scour in the sediment. This one looks really fresh, actually. Oh, um, got to be on the lookout. Ooh. You can tell. I mean, okay, not like <laughs> I just missed it. <laughs> Don't get but, us excited. Uh, that, you know, over time they've become uh, filled with debris. But, uh, you know, the fact that the sediment is kind of, you know, recently disturbed uh, could be you know could be years okay most of the time when i hear fresh from a biologist i'm thinking like you know a couple hours ago <laughs> when the geologist says fresh you know <laughs> could be 100 years ago <laughs> yeah, yeah it no, is. that's like a couple million years <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting when you work in the deep sea the, the craziest thing about working in the deep sea is time is very different down here 
because just to get down here, if you're a particle or even a living animal, it takes a long time, like years sometimes, to sink down from the surface, depending on how large the particle is. Really? Years? Yeah. yeah, some of the finest grain sediments, yeah. So if, if you're a small, fine-grained piece of sediment, you know, dust that settles out of the atmosphere into the ocean, sinks down, assuming you make it out of the surface mixed layer, and down below, uh, you know, a couple hundred meters or so, you can be in the midwater, you know, for years before you actually land in the sediment. Wow. Stokes settling velocity, if you want to look it up in the physics book. Say that again? Stokes, Stokes settlement velocity. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll look it up now. I'm, I'm looking that up. Stokes settlement velocity. Years. All our gauges is good. Stokes law. Yeah. The particle Sorry. sedimentation velocity is proportional to the density difference between the solid and liquid, and inversely proportional to the viscosity of the liquid, and proportional to the square of the particle diameter. Well, oh, okay. Stokes law. <laughs> oh. There you have it, world. That was that was uh, basic physical oceanography for me back in the day, back in 2009. <laughs> they still teach that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> I was uh, I was bringing your head around the port there while you were doing gauges. Three four three, we're gonna wind up on. Is that another one of those sea stars, the uh, slime star? Yeah, it might be. Uh, any chance to zoom on the sea star? Absolutely. You want to zoom on it, or you want me to zoom on it? Uh, you can zoom on it. Let's just do a regular HD. Got it. So many options. <laughs> How do I get left out of all this? And it, we're going to need to make a uh, decision <laughs> go to tree the back here. <laughs> How about we do both? You first, Tammy. <laughs> Yay. I need to pan down a little and look it up too far. Yeah, it looks like a uh, slime star. Family Terasteridae. Usually you see them on hard rocky surfaces, but um, occasionally on the sediment. That might be my new favorite, at least name. Okay, your turn. Deep sea creature. Deep quite slime cute. star. Yeah. Quite cute. Yeah, Gee. I like them. I'm going to try uh, looking down there with the... Looking down with the 4K? Uh, no, let's keep going. Right oh, we're waiting. We have another, uh, where, what do we got now? We have another two hours to burn <laughs> a few more 4Ks. Oh, cool. What is it, five per watch? Yeah, but the other watch, so we, we, we started with nine possible, because the last watch didn't use theirs. Okay. So we're just going to roll them over. Oh, that's okay, fine, cool. right? Roll over four okay. K. Roll like over four K. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. We're only on number we're only on four oh. then. Okay. okay. We're only on four. Oh. Four of nine. Some cool questions. This might be for nav. Oh, there's um, a, uh, oh what do we see? So that's a fish right there. The sediment. Looks like a uh, tripod fish. Hey, zoom in there, Tammy. This could be an interesting four K, actually. A tripod? Tripod fish. Yep. Tripod fish. You'll see what I mean in a second. Yeah, so I'm looking up quite a bit because we're going uphill. It's a far zoom. That's why it's bouncing around so much. If we uh, move up to the 4K because it's closer to the front of the vehicle, you'll get oh, oh. There it goes. a more stable view. That's all right. If it's going to run away, we can move on. Yeah, it's taking off. He's in the 4K now, Steve. Uh, that's okay. We'll let it go. Okay. You can zoom without recording, right? Yeah. Snap zoom. Yeah. I'm going to, I think, gonna so uphill is to the, 
it's still zero four five, right? You want me to zoom in on Argus? Uh, yeah. So we're kind of on like a. We think we're on kind of a ridge. Um. You're good, Tammy. We should be on the top of the ridge, but it's. It looks like we still have ridge. Yeah, I'm but gonna I'm gonna offset just a little. So. Okay. Antonella's at zero one five, so I'm gonna. Yeah, we can bump over a little bit. Okay. The ship as well, if you want. Rebecca, question: um, the geologist on board, are you also trained as marine biologist? That is a good question, but no. So. In my program of study, um, geologists only have to take three of the four core oceanography classes. So I know a little bit about physical oceanography, That's some chemical oceanography, and I'll then all offset, uh, kind of I specialize like in the geology the side of door, things, right? okay, specifically with volcanoes. Um, I don't know a lot about the squishy things. <laughs> squishy things, not so much. Not so much. But that's why this is such a great opportunity, you know, to sit with people who do that sort of stuff um, and get to learn that way. I've always said my most exciting cruises are ones where geologists are included because you learn about things in context and not just corals on a rock. Right. Corals on a rock that's, you know, crust covered or whatever. Or, you know, whether it's volcanic or biogenic right curls on a rock I think that's sounds the name like of a, a band sounds like a country song I was like it was yeah. like so there's something there there's a, there's some sort of musical thing going on there for sure oh so are these tracks that we've seen are they more of those like critter tracks that you were talking about earlier yeah same same kind of critter tracks um, Probably also sea cucumbers, but they could also be sea urchins, uh, sea stars. Speaking urchins will kind of like shovel. They'll create shovel, like they'll shovel a pathway that's more wide. Mm -hmm. uh, sea cucumbers are probably going to be more narrow. But there's also these really cool traces here, like this one. That is evidence of uh, something called a echiurin. Or a spoonworm. A spoonworm. So they create these starburst shaped traces in the sediment where they're living in the hole at the center, but they use uh, a type of proboscis extended outside the hole and just scrape off this kind of green, yummy organic material from the surface. And they'll bring it back to their mouth and then stick out the proboscis and like shovel it in. That's a cool adaptation, especially down at the deep. Yeah. We got a question coming in about the metabolism of deep sea creatures. What does that look like? Is it fast? Is it slow? Super slow, presumably. Um, a lot of species in the deep sea are living at temperatures that are at or near freezing. Uh, so what are we at now? 1.6 degrees C, so just above freezing. And uh, a lot of them, uh, you know, their body temperature is essentially the same as the, the outside environment. Um, so for that reason, you know, chemistry happens very slow at cold temperatures. So their metabolism is typically very slow. Because of that, they often, uh, you know, they may only need to feed a few times per year, um, depending on what type of animal it is. Um, if you're a deposit feeder and you're feeding on very low quality, low carbon food, like sediments here, uh, you probably need to eat constantly. But if you're um, an animal like the giant isopod, the giant isopod uh, is a scavenger and may only need to feed a couple times per year to uh, maintain its you know, body, reproduce, carry out all its functions. Cool. Simple answer, slow. Very slow. <laughs> Oh man, I wonder if we could use that um, equation you, you looked up for this question. How long would it take for a 15 pound bowling ball to hit the bottom, bottom of the sea floor? <laughs> and is there an equation or some sort of formula I could use to figure this out? Oh, whoa, 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 
are we Stokes doing someone's homework right now? <laughs> I think we are. I think we are. Can you check my answer? It was 52 minutes. <laughs> does, that, does that work out to a meter a second? Uh, stands on the case. All you need is Stokes Law. If you if you have all the information, you can plug it into Stokes Law and you can find out the exact time. Really? Yep. I'm gonna zoom you need to know the viscosity of seawater, though. Yeah. And the viscosity of seawater changes happens, over depth, so you're talking about calculus now. Oh. You know, whether it's, uh, yeah, that's good. you know, temperature affects viscosity too, but only slightly, probably negligible. One of physical oceanography's, uh, most one of the physical oceanography's world favorite things to do is to just yeah, we're gonna yeah, get rid it. of that variable. It's not really that important <laughs> anyway. It's negligible over the scale that we're talking about. So, so there you go, challenge. Use that law and get back to us. Let's see what your answer is. <laughs> You'll have to drop down a little more. I'm tugging you, I think. Yeah. Sorry about oh, that. Oh, cool. So the timer, what's the timer in the control room for? I think you might be referring to the UTC clock that you see in the front of the control back. room. Is that right, Tammy? It's exactly correct. Got that it. is our control room clock. <laughs> That's pretty much how it's labeled in all of our documentation. <laughs> <laughs> What I want to know is why is it never right? Uh, <laughs> how is it not right? It's off of GPS. Huh? It's not four o'clock. <laughs> it's exactly it's four right. o'clock somewhere. <laughs> it's exactly correct. Four thirteen oh. Wait, Dan, are you even supposed to be on this watch? <laughs> no. <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> is it the same star? <laughs> Wait, are we going in circles? <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Navigator. Really, really hope not. Uh. <laughs> no. It looks like exactly the same star. It kind of does. It kind of does. <laughs> we are moving at point two. So. Yeah, we, we could pick up if we wanted to. Yeah, you could. I, uh, ba I backed up because I was getting too far away. Ah, uh, okay. So to go back to the clock and where... Dan is confused with himself. I know he's confused. really not. <laughs> uh, we do operate all of our recordings and everything record under UTC time. So then it's a universal time code that is used by all over the world because a lot of our footage and data gets shared throughout the whole world. So then that way uh, everyone has, is on the same idea with what time it is, not just like, oh, wait, where were they? What time were they using? Everything's recorded in UTC time. And Tammy, that's the same as like Greenwich Means or Zulu time, right? Uh, I believe so. Yes, yeah. that's correct. I just been, the voice in my ear just told me, yes, that's <laughs> correct. <laughs> I have, I have sources coming from all over. Sure you don't do it just to confuse me? <laughs> <laughs> well, that might be part of it. If you could tell us what that uh, waiting for sensor thing up there is that I had to install. Uh, before that, do we want to pick up speed and also put in a new step? We're about uh, 15 meters off our current step. Yeah, let's do it from science. Thank you. Yeah, keep Dan? it moving. Keep Good. it moving. Bridge, Nav. All right, we'd like to increase speed to 0 0.3 knots um, and then continue with a 100 meter step bearing 343. Thank you. Wow. Steve, that slime star that kept popping up, why is it called a slime star? So these, uh, these slime stars are, you know, at least when they've been handled, and collected in the past, they produce copious amounts of mucus, um, presumably because they're also stressed out uh, a little bit when they come up from the seafloor. You know, it's much warmer, and uh, you know, it depends on what kind of box they're being held in. But typically, whether or not you know they're stressed out, they'll produce lots and lots of mucus uh, when they're collected. But on the seafloor, there, it's not really apparent. They, they don't use the mucus necessarily in any sort of feeding, but it could be, you know, defensive in nature. Lots of things use mucus as a defensive mechanism to you know, suffocate or distract uh, potential predators. I just like that we have a slime star. That's really cool. Let's 
Look at those tracks. We're going to uh, tilt up with the Zeus here and look out in the distance. Oh, yeah, it's still dark. Just checking. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Tammy, I did interrupt your question before about waiting for sensor. Oh, yeah. Dan? I have no idea what sensor is we're waiting <laughs> for. We've been waiting a long time for that sensor. Yeah, I, I, I just remember having to put it up there and being told, make sure ROV can read it. <laughs> <laughs> sure yeah, can. I can read it. <laughs> what I want to know is where is monitor 5? <laughs> and is it a 4K monitor? It is not ordered yet. Who do I talk to? Ed, are you listening? <laughs> Is anybody out there? <laughs> Does anybody hear me? <laughs> I think there was plans for it monitor is. five. It is still plans. Did I hear you have plans to buy a back row 4K monitor? Yeah. Oh gosh, here we go. <laughs> oh. So we need two of them. Because there is a monitor five. Oh, no, would that be monitor five in the back row? You know, you just buy in bulk and it'll save you some money. There totally. You, there you go. <laughs> oh. Sorry, that voice in my head is talking again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, can't hear anything. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Static. We're going to do a quick roll call here again um, for people here. just joining here. us. Here, every, is everybody here? <laughs> Are we present? Yep. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Physically, <laughs> mentally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dejana Figueroa from Los Angeles, California, Science Communication Fellow. Um, happy to be here as part of this exploration and sharing your questions with the team here. I'm on the science roll with some amazing people. I'm going to go ahead and Hand it over to you, Jordan. I'm uh, Jordan Akiyama with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service based out of Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, yeah, we, the Pacific uh, Islands Fish and Wildlife Office, we do help maintain a lot of the Pacific Remote Island Marine National Monuments, um, as well as the national wildlife refuges that reside within them, such as Palmyra Atoll National Wildlife Refuge, which we are currently sort of, or we're currently within the boundaries of. And I am uh, watch leading. My name is Steve Oskovich. I am the lead scientist for this cruise um, at sea. We have a couple of other science leads uh, on shore. Geology team at University of Rhode Island. Oh, there's a coral there, actually, just off to the right. Ooh. Of course, as soon as I start speaking. <laughs> right. right? Go right. Why doesn't it go, go right. right? Go that way. Roger. <laughs> There's some interesting bioturbation up in the top left, too. Yeah, I saw that, too. I love yeah. that word. Oh, uh, yeah. What is this? Zoom in there a little if you want to. Okay. Push in a little more, maybe. Should hold it there. This is why studying... It's like a corkscrew. Soft sediments for corals is also equally important because you get these bizarre corals from time to time. This one, I think, is a chrysogorgid. Can't quite see. Uh, Any better? Tilt down and get closer, then you can get it both of your cameras here. You zoom in a little more. There, you can both zoom now. Does it have something on it? Uh, it's a crinoid on it, yep. Mm. Oh, I, I'm looking at two different cameras. <laughs> it's getting getting confusing. Yeah. And you guys wonder what it's like for me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll try and concentrate on one camera. Here. Yeah. The big one, big screen. The HD, yeah. Yeah, so this this is a uh, Christogorge. It's called Radicipes. And... Uh, it's one of these corals that you know, is uh, usually, it can be hard or soft, uh, 
sediment, but um, in this case, this particularly large colony has a uh, soft sediment dwelling. I don't think it's, it's not a sea pen. It's a crested orchid. Yeah. You can see the golden color of the skeleton as a giveaway for that particular family. Uh, but there's also a crinoid on there. And something else, maybe. Can't tell. Uh, there seems to be a bulge around where that crinoid where is Where the attached. crinoid is, right? Yeah. Yeah. I could uh, sit down here, Steve, if you want to. Yeah, if you got time, you know. We do. We got time, right? You want a ship stop? No, no. Okay. No. Yeah. Just uh, nudge in here a little. Tammy, can you zoom out just a bit for me? Thank you. Maybe same on 4K. We'll get lucky and get both of them. You don't have to zoom at the bulge. You can zoom anywhere if it's easier. Yeah, this, I need to come down. I was. Letting Alexa fly really, there. Really nicely lit up, though. Who are you letting fly? Alexa was flying. Alexa, fly the ROV. <laughs> <laughs> someone's, someone's Alexa just went <laughs> off. Not a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Heard that one real quick. Yeah. In there. <laughs> Uh, any particular area you want to? Um, yeah, can you zoom on the the crinoid associate here? Can do. Yep. Okay, Tammy, should be able to push in there. Oh. Really nice. Yeah. So. Uh, I don't think, I mean, the crinoid's probably been there a while, so that's why it's, it looks like a, it's bulged there. It doesn't look like it's actually harming the coral, but uh, it's a great shot. Mm -hmm. um, just, uh, do, you have, do you think you have time for a small snip and slurp of this uh, colony? Maybe uh, yep. sure do. 10 centimeters or so off the end. Snip and slurp? Snip and slurp. All yeah, right. I think it's going to be super floaty. Otherwise. Pause the ship. Slip and start. Oh, we got some viewers saying you turned their Alexa on. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, okay to stop the ship? Uh, you yeah. want to? Yeah, might yeah. as well. Well, yeah. Yeah, I better stop. Okay. Argus will keep Bridge swinging, nap. so. Hold position. So, it's a... Uh, you want to turn on the porch light? Porch light coming on, Tammy. Ready. Let's see how how floaty it is. Maybe if it'll go in the forward box somewhere. Maybe we can put it in the forward box. Is that uh, enough? Too yeah, that's much? perfect. Right, that's right there. Good. No, zoom in a bit, Tammy. We can see that. Yeah, just go to. That's good. Let's see if I can. That's my cutter. Perfect. I miss? Just a little piece of the colony. Oh. 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 I missed. Might not be in the cutter. Try that again. <laughs> uh. Huh? Oh, yeah. Very resilient coral. If that's it, actually, uh. Wow. I, So it's in a cutter, and when it rotates. Oh, uh, I was trying to get it to snap there on the cutter. I don't want to let go of it again because surely it will. Oh. Wow. Very good. <laughs> ROV is sliding. Stop sliding. Why are you sliding? Might get pulled. Yeah, yeah get sorry. pulled. Come, uh, what do you got left? Come five meters left. Come down five. Okay.
Steve, what type of coral is this again? So it's, it, it is an octocoral. I was trying to figure out. You all right if I do a smear, Steve, and snap it off there? Uh, yeah, we just don't want to take the whole thing. Right there, just use a... Uh, I'm not sure how well it's anchored into the sediment either. This actually, th the way this is giving up a fight suggests it actually might be a type of sea pen. done it. Are we on a jar ready to rock and roll? Yep, uh, jar two. Thank you. 30%, uh, do you want more? Yeah, uh, 50 probably. Okay, that's 50. Seems to be going in there. Off it went. Perfect. <laughs> nice smear on the 4K. <laughs> rare view of what's under the sediment. There it is. It Perfect. Is. Works great. Steve, is this number five? What are we on? Five? Yeah. Yeah, this is five. You could uh, start the ship moving again. If, if Steve's all right to uh, yes. do a super I'll catch move. up. Let's, uh, let's do a catch up. Bridge. Catching up. Can you zoom out on that 4K? We can uh, resume at 100 meters bearing 343. Yeah, and 0 0.3 knots is great, thanks. Hold on, Antonella, let me okay. get a little slack there. For yeah, sorry. Uh, which way do I need so to I think turn? this is actually a type of sea pen. I'll have to take a look at it when okay, we... Uh, from you right now. When it comes up? When it comes up, yeah. I've seen something like this before, but it's never been sampled, to the best of my knowledge. But it's not in any of the... Not in any of the guides. Could be a good sign. Steve, when you get a chance, could you zoom out on 4K? Zoom out. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't look at it too closely. Oh, cool shadow, though. Okay, I'm spun around here. Let me just get a little closer to you, and then you can come up. Okay. Unless you want to take a mud sample with Argus. <laughs> Steve's question, is the sea pen the still a colonial <laughs> coral? Yes. So the sea pens are a type of colonial animal, and they are technically corals, um, even though most of them, most sea pens are sediment dwelling. Oops. Okay, most sea pens are, are sediment come up. dwelling. <laughs> But there's occasionally a couple types of sea pens called rock pens that are often associated with hard bottoms. Uh, instead of being anchored into the sediment, they kind of suck onto the rock surface. Yeah, keep coming up. Okay. Right so are sea pens right characteristically, uh, I guess, more resilient to things like sampling? Um, or just stronger skeletons? They have a slightly different type of skeleton. Okay. Yeah. And the ship moves underway. A lot of right. sea pens also have the small you know, sclerites, the, the calcium carbonate you know, shards in their polyps, okay, um, but they also have a kind of a okay. proteinaceous uh, kind of axis yeah. that is within the fleshy part. Might be tangled up. Which oftentimes up is uh, kind of usually restrictive to cutting. Uh, it's pretty resilient compared to other corals. Oh, I got it. <laughs> That's cool. first. Yep. 
You want to pause here? Tell you in a second. See how bad it is. I think we're all right. Sorry about the view there, back row, and my tether wrapped around me. Have All good. Hold uh, what you got there for a second. Okay. Get I have a general question for the scientists in the back. Um, what's your biggest, why is that, what is that, and why is it their moment that you've had? That's, that's a good delta there, we're fine. Okay. What a great question. That is a great question. <laughs> what is that? To think about Why it. is it there, right? <laughs> I wonder, does that happen for rocks too? Like, what type of rock is that? And why is it there? Sometimes. Uh, so sometimes when doing dredges, it's pretty rare, but um, dredging the seafloor essentially just pulls a metal basket along to collect rocks. Um, and there have been instances where you get a rock in your sample collection and you go to you know do some do some sample processing or, or geochemical analysis on it, and it's just completely different um, than what you were expecting. And sometimes they can just be rocks that other expeditions have kind of dropped along the way. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> so it can be kind of kind of difficult to discern those things. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny because uh, we had a, one of those moments in the last cruise of the last year where we sampled a white egg-shaped rock uh, from 3,000 meters okay. deep on Try a seamount, uh, right which is not very typical of either of those things, the depth or you know seamounts. Um, and it turned out it was a massive chunk of probably carbonate material Deep, 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 like around a volcano. I don't think and, uh, there was no chance that it could have came from that feature because uh, if it had been nowhere near the surface, so you wouldn't I'm have corals yeah, or anything producing frozen. that kind of rock. Yeah, so I always watch it here because it's, it's really actually cooling. back at the at the samples lab, geology samples lab, uh, for archiving, and hopefully somebody will figure That's out what it is, where it came from. Yeah, no, I think I remember. Uh, checking that rock out as we kind of started to unpack yep. the boxes <laughs> before coming here. It's a very special rock. So if I want to be a super villain against geologists, I could just go around dropping different samples of rocks <laughs> that aren't supposed to be in that area <laughs> on the ocean floor. But we'd have to use that equation to calculate how long it would <laughs> take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long it would take to the bottom. That's right. Yeah, Jordan, theoretically, yes, but we'd appreciate it if you didn't. <laughs> Rebecca, what's one of the coolest rocks you've encountered um, in your studies? Oh, that's a good question. So the study area that I'm working on now, um, is a, it's off the western coast of Mexico, so like Socorro Islands. Um, oh, yes. And there was an eruption there in 1993 that produced floating basalt. Yes. Um, so that's pretty sweet to kind of take a look at. Megan Lubeckin used those samples and that eruption specifically for their master's thesis as well. Um, so I'm kind of continuing on the work um, with the rocks collected in the area from uh, surrounding that vent site. Awesome. Yeah, we collected those, some of those samples for with Megan in right. 2017, I think, Yep. out of the archipelago. And they were able to get some amazing super macro shots um, some of those samples that were just stunning. Yeah, no, they're pretty sweet, and there's yeah. a large variety of uh, physical characteristics just by looking at them, too. Nice. It's a great story, too. Like, it really captures the imagination. Oh, absolutely. Could you describe floating basalt? Like, could you give <laughs> us a... Perfect segue. ...a verbal description of what that is? Sure. Um, so these magmas in particular are really, really volatile rich. So there's a lot of carbon dioxide in them, a lot of water. Um, and with that, you know, as they're erupted from the seafloor, pressure kind of lets the gas out. Um, but these, what was that? these um, rocks in particular, they're basalts, these? so they're dark in color, right? But they have really large vesicles. Um, so they kind of look like pumice in that way. Um, yeah. They're That's pretty cool. sweet to look at.
crinoid. There's also a bunch of xenophyophores around here, these small little mushroom-shaped structures. Mm -hmm. Xenophyophores are single-celled protists. Uh, they often form these, well, that's just... That looks like... <laughs> yep, that's Bottom what blue. it is. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> okay. Probably from a sea cucumber. <laughs> Vacuums of Bioturdation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can zoom out. <laughs> Where are the single cell pro? Uh, oh, there's a shrimp there. Uh, so th these critters, so all these little. That's a critter? Yeah. What? <laughs> Those are yep. just specks. No, no, they're not. Says I mean, I believe you, but. Uh, they're, yeah, foraminifer. Uh, so it's a type of foraminiferin called xenophyophores. They're single-celled creatures that produce a house out of agglutinating sediments together. Um, and that's how they live. They eat organic material. Huh. Yep. Tough to say if they're alive in this case, but, uh, you know, they leave their houses for... Uh, Zoom in, Tammy. ...a long time since this area isn't really disturbed, but they could be alive. Are they like the benthic equivalent of a larvation the uh, late biggest houses yeah i mean there are foraminiferans in the water column too that ah, you can see okay. actually this is a really good picture one stop moving the camera oh. uh, uh, uh. sorry talking to myself yeah i was gonna say <laughs> talking to alexa yeah. i don't know what a forum is i like can't picture what that organism looks like in my brain so uh is it think of an amoeba okay and it's kind of like that. Uh, but they, they have different types of houses that they live in. So some have shells, okay, some have sediment houses like this. But essentially it's kind of like an amoeba. Yeah. Are those the ones that like have Push chemical more, signatures they and they look for them in the sediments, like the forams? Really? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so uh, one of the labs at GSO, uh, Becky Robinson's lab does a lot of work Thanks, with forams. And you can get different okay. um, isotope signatures from Thank their you. fossilized shells, um, and that records past climate. Um, and so it's just reconstructing, essentially, Perfect. paleoclimates um, through those signatures. Like, you can use nitrogen isotopes. Um, there's a lot of cool things to do with it. Wow, so little tiny single-celled organisms give us information about paleoclimate. Indeed. Steve, do you want to keep going here or stop in a couple minutes? No, nope, keep on going. Roger, thanks. Until we get to the hard stuff. Bridge enough. We can add one zero zero meters on the same bearing. Yeah, depending on the depth we're at, um, oftentimes, probably not here, but on these uh, more remote um, seamounts that don't have a lot of you know, land area nearby, the sediments will be composed mostly of foraminiferin shells, uh, you know, they get stuck in pockets over millions of years. Um, that's a really cool sea, sea cucumber. Right? Whoa. That's pretty sweet. It's like a void. It's sucking all the light <laughs> out of the surrounding environment. Look at that. This is probably a, Push it's in called a, a synolactid sea cucumber. Whoa. I like to call them bottom vacuums. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That is it. Like Definitely a very a nice slow one. moving Roomba. <laughs> that is pretty much what they do. <laughs> yep. Except they have to dispose of it somewhere. <laughs> it comes out the other yeah. end. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Good shot. Thanks. Move it on. But why would you want yourself to be a dark color on light sediment or does it not matter I don't think it matters much here light. yeah uh, the color is pretty variable with these um, I, it might it it's, might just be the density of color mm. um, but you know a lot of these are, are very translucent also or sometimes they're opaque uh, this one you could actually see the gut inside um, it's tough to say there's a, there's a couple of hypotheses that uh, you know, might indicate why certain things are pigmented certain ways. One says it's probably in their diet. You know, um, they eat certain things. 
you know, shows up in their uh, in their body as a, a pigment. One says that it's uh, phylogenetically constrained, so that means that their ancestors had this this gene that produces this pigment. And since genes are often, uh, you know, mutations often will add uh, genes, it's really hard for, you know, whole areas of the genome to be deleted. So they'll just kind of retain these portions of their genome uh, that produce these pigments. Um, and so they'll just continue to express them. Uh, it could just be, I don't know, they just like that color. <laughs> You have to assume it, it has some sort of benefit, otherwise it might have been you know, selected out of the population over over time. evolutionary time, yeah. yeah. Couple of general questions coming in. How long are we gonna keep the ROV underwater? And how long could we keep it underwater? Our dive plan is for 24 hours, so uh, another 18 hours or so, I think, and then uh, 17 hours, maybe a little bit less than that on bottom. Um, but the plan is to recover sometime around mid morning to midday tomorrow. And uh, what then? Probably transit to another site, but theoretically, we could stay down longer, but it doesn't necessarily. Um, doesn't necessarily help us in this circumstance because we're also making collections. We want to get those collections up and preserved. Um, and we, you know, our, our boxes don't do us very much good if they're just full. We can't put anything more in them. So that's one of the reasons to recover. Got it. Empty the boxes, so send them back down. Kind of depends on the dive plan and what's going on, how long. Yep. Um, I think our record is 75 hours for Hurricane Argus and 92 for Argus only. Ooh. Wow. Argus only doesn't run out of place, places That's to That's kind of rocks. impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Argus <laughs> only doesn't run out of places? Well, I didn't know Argus had places. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, Argus doesn't have places. That's, oh. that's why. And we were using Argus as a side scan um, and as a side scan sonar um, looking for the wreck of the Samoan Clipper, which was a, um, a Pan Am flying boat. Uh, and so we were using it as high scan sonar with the ability to, if we did see something interesting, drop down and use the camera, but we were mostly just using it for the sonar. So we, we literally had Argus in the water for 92 hours straight, uh, which was wow. definitely interesting operations for us. <laughs> that was a good run. Yeah. It's a long run. I wonder if we'll ever cool. go look for it again. So there you have it. Maybe. <laughs> Quite a few hours or however many hours work for the dive plan, right, yeah. at that time. Was cool. anyone on the cruise that had the 75-hour dive? Me. Oh? Tammy was. Video. Tammy. Is that <laughs> a ONC dive? You know it. Ah, okay. Yeah. What were you doing? Cable? Heck whatever I Ian Kula okay. told us to. <laughs> maintenance. We were doing maintenance because that's what we always do. Okay, yeah. so not cabling. No, uh, okay. en maintenance. Engineering maintenance for the uh, ONC yeah. Uh, yeah. cable network. ONC? Uh, Ocean Networks Canada. Yeah, yeah they have a 800 kilometer uh, deep sea observatory. So a cable network basically providing power to deep sea instruments along various nodes. And the nodes oh. span fish and Argus. Several different uh, deep sea habitats off of uh, Vancouver <coughs> Island, British Columbia. So there are instruments looking at the abyssal plane, at hydrothermal vents, um, continental shelf. There's they're kind of spread out, um, and Nautilus has provided six or seven years of support, um, providing maintenance or a, a platform for maintenance to be performed uh, on the different nodes. Cool. So we'll bring down new instruments. We'll use the TBOS instrument or the TBOS tool. The toilet brush of science to clean camera lenses. T boss. <laughs> Very important instrument. Yeah. That may have been the origin. I think I feel like that's right. Yeah. yeah. For Wally. Let's see here. 
Yeah. Oh. Clean Wally's cameras. That's true, yeah. Wally, the Benthic Rover. Let's, Let's connect see. to that one of the nodes. Questions from the world. Let's see. Oh, a couple things coming in. How long have we been at sea? I'm going to say seven days. I don't know. I. I <laughs> It's, it's a good exactly guess. Seven uh, days today. It has indeed been a week. A week. <laughs> Push in on that one if you want, Tammy. <laughs> so we've been out here about seven days. We. L I just know we left on a Monday, and I think today's a Monday too. But maybe days sometimes. I I miss I miss days sometimes out here. <laughs> it feels like it's there been a no lot days. longer. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. All I want is one night on DP. Oh, that's cool. Just one Two night. green dots. What are they for? Um, I think they help us with scale. So I don't have exact, uh, is that 10 centimeters? I'm guessing the Failed it. Failed it. width between the two green dots, approximately 10 centimeters, helps us get an idea of how big things are that we're looking at down there. Also noticing the squiggly trails on the sand. It looks like there's lots of squiggly trails on the sand. What causes that? Currents? or animals? In this case, it's animals. Uh, yeah, animals feeding, animals moving, uh, often doing both at the same time. Uh, yeah, that's the, those, those are the sources. But there's a lot of other animals that live in and around the sediments. Sometimes you might find evidence of bioturbation as just small mounds. So when an animal, like a worm or something, creates a burrow, They'll, or sometimes crustaceans like shrimp, they'll excavate and pour, put sediment out to the sides of the burrow. Um, those are actually quite common. Uh, but here, yeah, we've got a bunch of different things. Echirin traces and sea stars, sea urchins, whale scours, beaked whale scours. Some of them are pretty fresh. Pretty fresh meaning? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly up to years, yeah. <laughs> Good qualifier. There's, uh, there's been some work done on beaked whale scours and the abyssal plain, um, but no one's actually seen one of these things, you know, on the seafloor before, so. Come down five if you want. It's tough to say conclusively that they made them, but it's the su suspicion based on where they've been observed on the surface and where they dive to, where they're capable of diving to. Dan, do you want so it would be a big deal if we heading? actually or image one of this that? happening. That would be once in a lifetime We're thing. You. Yeah. Uh, you can follow the vehicle. I'm trying to stay to the northeast of there. But Especially because you presume they have some ability to navigate on the seafloor. They wouldn't want to be around a loud ROV. A lot of whiny noises, hydraulic noises. Steve, for our next move, um, have a little bit of a decision to make here. Yep. Just zooming out so you can see our future trajectory. So we're down here at waypoint three. Um, we do need to start heading kind of due north if we want to make it to waypoint four um, and then waypoint five above it. So we can start moving a little bit north, northeast. Uh, let me zoom in here. So right now, if we continue on this heading, we'll kind of go to the west side of this theoretical ridge. If we want to hit waypoint four, we need to head more to the east. Yeah, let's let's do that and let's go up slope. Uh, I think they're in the same direction. Uh, Great. So let's do that. More of a due north heading then. Sorry. Great. Bearing. Well, let's do northeast and then till, until we acquire like the top of the ridge, theoretical okay. ridge. Sounds good. So there are you thinking? Yeah, this looks good. Great. And then we'll correct as needed. Zero, zero, five. Any reason to stop or we can keep going? Keep on going as far keep as I'm concerned. Yeah, this is just, I thought this was going to be much more Rocky. Yeah. Bridge nav. We can but we do need to get away want, from the from the uh, islands a little do bit. One zero zero meters bearing zero zero five. Our original dive 
or our cruise plan didn't really have us getting down this far for this long. Mm. Our plan was to spend more time up in the northern parts of the EEZ and uh, edges of the monument, only ducking down here for maybe three or four days. Um, we've been here for maybe like seven days. Have to reimagine that plan. Well, we haven't been here, yeah, here seven days. We've been here, yeah, three, four days or so, but, um, you know, we planned on doing other sites on the way down. It looks like over the next few days, uh, the weather and conditions might clear up a bit that we can head off to the east um, a little bit and explore some parts of the Line Islands Ridge that have not been uh, explored yet, sample them. Um, and we'll see how far east we can go, but probably not until Thursday or Friday uh, will we have an opportunity to head back up north towards uh, the northern boundaries of the monument. Got it. Dan, did I hear you say that you're fine going faster too? Yeah, I'm good with that. Steve, interest? Yeah, what are we? What are you planning on moving at? Point three. Bump it up. We're currently at point three. We could bump it up to point four, point five. Um, yeah, let, let, let's go 0.5 for a little bit, and uh, we'll t tone it back down as we get closer yeah. to 4. The trade-off of going faster is we get more swing back with Argus. Yeah. So you pay for it on the other end, but if we have a long transit, it's worth it. It's it's not terribly long, so what, uh, maybe a couple hundred meters, but we'll keep an eye on that and, yeah. and tone it down, down the speed. Yeah, well in advance. Right. To the next waypoint, it's 200 meters. Yep. You want to do five? Yeah, okay. point five is fine. Yeah, let's do that. And we'll, after about 100 meters, we'll draw it back a little bit. Okay, great. So we can start to swing back under. Bridge, Nev. We can increase speed to 0 0.5, please. So this is a really large Ekir and Trace right here. The whole thing is one starburst. animal that probably lived right there. And it's just, these are all its feeding traces. That's cool. Yeah. You can so really see that star form formation. The is there two? Yeah, I, I was going to see two. Could be. Could have been two, you know? yeah. But it looks like this is where it lived. This was this mound, kind of where you know it had you know, uh, excavated sediments. Yeah, and then there's another one over here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We saw probably what is the largest Echiaran mounds I've ever seen last year. Um, we were diving around the Chautauqua Seamount area, and uh, at this depth, actually, we saw a meter tall mound or so, uh, and these massive spoonworms. A meter mound? Yeah, a meter tall. Wow. I'm just, that's, you know, compared to our <laughs> centimeters here. Yep. yep. <laughs> that's imp super impressive. No, they were they were really large. And uh, we did see yeah. one live individual. We tried to push core the sediment too, but it was uh, it's pretty soupy, very liquefied. Yeah, how come we haven't taken any push cores out here? Uh, not interested. Not right here. No. They have to be close to rocks, do they? Yeah, the idea is that uh, ideally we'd want to take push cores adjacent to rock collections, right. um, just so we can have that comparison. Oftentimes, though, getting rocks and getting sediment are kind of mutually exclusive. <laughs> so we, we try. Question about camera and video. Um, do we have 360 cameras on board Herc? Because they would be great for a virtual reality in experience there, in 4K. There okay, are it. no 360 it. cameras uh, currently on Herc, but I think they might have done something in the past with it. Okay, good. I think uh, zoom out, we did some of that. Some of that. Right. I don't know what year, but it was off Southern California. Someone had brought out a four, uh, 360 camera and had turned a small section of the dive into a virtual reality video. That was a number of years ago, I think. Maybe 2016, something around there. 
Yeah, 2016 or 2017, I feel. Sounds about right. I've done a little 360 uh, stuff while scuba diving. It's pretty, pretty cool. I wonder how it translates to deep sea diving with an ROV. And a lot of times there's a giant dust trail behind the vehicle. Especially if we've uh, if we've been sampling in sticky mud, it sticks on the vehicle, so it just kind of stays there. Yeah, for kinda example, like if, I, if I dress backwards, you'll see a lot of uh, debris come into the camera like that. Well, that's the sediment that's traveling with the vehicle. Something so floating in the water coming up. Our aft cameras and our side cameras are typically dusty. Floating in the water. Uh, I think it, I think we just passed it off to the starboard side. Something dark. I'm looking at the Argus view, so it actually might be above Herc. Is it the sea cucumber, maybe? There's two on the seabed there. Yep. You want to look at one? Not particularly. I think, we're zooming. I think these are ones we've already seen, but. And by zooming, I mean we're going fast. <laughs> not not, not oh, using yeah. the camera, sorry. <laughs> new new yeah, word choice. Stay in your lane now. Zipping. <laughs> Ooh, the lead just told you. <laughs> <laughs> we're zipping. How about that? <laughs> we zip and then we. Wait, didn't we, zip, have, this, zip, didn't we have this conversation oh, yeah. one year? Zip, zap, and zoom zip, or something? Zip, zap, and zoom, yeah. It's more like zip, sit, and zoom. Mm -hmm. Steve, you mentioned that the ROVs are loud and stuff wants to stay away from them. What type of creatures are we missing because of the loud sound sources and the bright lights? Uh, yeah, probably larger, you know, the more charismatic megafauna, like uh, you know whales and things like that. Maybe some sharks, you know, occasionally. Not necessarily. We get we, we still get them uh, at these depths, but things that you know that are aware of you know sound in the ocean. I think sea stars are still charismatic megafauna. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like I medium fauna. I don't think they they don't care about the sound very much. No. Um, Ooh, that's an interesting sonar target. Oh. That is. Pursue it. Pursuing. Um, We've got 13 meters to uh, the end of our step, so we can catch up a little bit. Uh, if you'd like. Sorry, say it. I, I don't get oh, it. Oh, we're about 10 meters from finishing our step, so the ship will stop unless I put in another move. Uh, Roger. So yeah. Argus catch up a, a bit. Argus has a 20, yeah. 40, 60, 80. So 100, 100 meters. Whoa. Let's you catch up a bit. Roger. <laughs> Oh, Rebecca, what is your job title? And how does somebody get a job doing this? Doing this data logging stuff? Yes. Oh, well, for this cruise, yeah, I'm data logger slash on the science team. Um, but, you know, in my everyday life, I'm a PhD student. Um, and so that's how I got my opportunity to come to see. Um, they needed more geologists on this cruise, and so my advisor brought the opportunity to my attention, um, and now I'm here. There, there you go. S same question, Jordan. I'm just happy to be here. No, um, <laughs> no uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, we, you know, the Pacific Rim Island Marine National Monument sort of falls under our jurisdiction. Um, and so with us, we do a lot of, you know, the permitting of the science expositions that come out this way. Um, so with us, or with me, it's a great opportunity to showcase, you know, the, not only the history of these monuments and how, what, a, you know, role they play in our ecosystem, but also to show the partnership that we play with the science community and, you know, those efforts. Awesome. Sweet. And for NAV, what is your job and how does somebody go about doing that? Mm, great question. Are you guys looking at this interesting sonar black hole? Sonar? Yeah. Yeah, we're hoping it'll show up in Argus. Yeah, unless it's a whale and then it can show up in Argus. 
Um, I don't see it. Yes, nav question. Uh, what is my job? I am working with the ROV pilots in the front row to make sure that the vehicles are um, at a safe distance and position um, in relation to the ship. So I'm also working with the bridge um, where our captain and officers are standing watch to call in uh, basically moves so the ship can move um, in different directions and maintain a different speed so that the vehicles are safely streaming behind um, the ship and safely also a distance from each other. So just kind of working with the, the front row team to keep an eye on everything up here um, and then also working with the back row and the science team uh, to make sure their needs are being met, um, getting to different waypoints, making sure timing is good for the a lot of time that we have for this dive. Um, and then also keeping an eye on weather. Uh, path to getting here, I really liked what Gabby said earlier about ROV pilots in that uh, everyone has a, there's as many different paths as there are people in the role. So I actually started with OET in 2016 as a science communication fellow um, and then came on board doing digital media and managing communications. And I just moved, recently moved into an operational role. So um, I've also had the opportunity to sit many of the roles in the van and. Um, have really been enjoying this one. So, uh, but I work with other navigators who have been through more formal, um, like C4 mapping programs and then moved into the navigator role um, or um, roles that have like industry roles, but working with, um, with ArcGIS or visual, uh, spatial visualization programs. Um, and then we have an internship program as well that works with um, the U.S. Coast Guard and Naval Academy is so bringing out students from those two tracks as navigator interns. You missed a very important part there. It's a wicked zoom. That George pointed out to me. Can we do a 4K? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. 4K. Can I go? Hold on, we're going to go in more. Let's see what this this thing's got. See if I can fly through a straw. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know if it's worth going in that far on the zoom. I could. Yeah. Since we got time, right? It's pretty good for uh, floating. But yep. it, you know. All right. I think we can burst it now. Ready for uh, record? Yep. Okay. We are recording. It's gonna be blurry because I'm dancing all over here. Burst done. All right. Good. Let's log that as a highlight. And move on. Move it on. Oh five oh four. Thank you for that detailed answer from an from anonymous. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. As for me, I am a science communication fellow with OET. My background is, I, I mean, there's a lot. <laughs> so I'll just say that I'm currently a teacher. I teach kindergarten and uh, 12th graders at a high school. But before that, I spent 17 years as a deep sea animal physiologist. So I started in science and then landed in education and communication. That was my pathway. Um, I just found a lot of, it brought me more joy to communicate the science than to actually have to do the work like Steve and plan the <laughs> dive plans and, <laughs> and execute the science. For me in video, I actually started out as a marine biologist and switched into getting another degree in video production. And then I worked as a production coordinator and script supervisor um, through my schooling. And then I was kind of discovered on LinkedIn actually. 
and with my combined degrees, I was just asked if I would be interested, and I would, this was exactly along the lines of what I thought I would do as a child. I would, thought I was going to work for Discovery Channel and do documentaries, and then I realized I don't want to live on the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> That's very specific. It's a, it's a, yeah, anticlimactic. Um, and Steve, speaking of uh, dive planning and executing, uh, we're all caught up with the vehicles. So, would you like to continue at a increased speed or or drop down to zero point three again? Uh. Well, we're going up now. Let's um, let's keep going at a faster speed. Dan. Good. Good. Until we uh, start to see some harder returns in the sonar. Bridge nav. Yeah, I'll try and keep an eye on the sonar. Uh, let's do another 100 zero zero meters, bearing zero zero 005 at 0 0.5 knots. Thanks. What I want to know is so many different biologists and phys physiologists on our watch who have gone on to do video analysis and teaching, and why am I still stuck? <laughs> <laughs> In academics? <laughs> did, I, did I miss a, miss a meeting or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, Steve, if you did miss the meetings, <laughs> then you would have <laughs> figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> you kept going to the academia meetings. Just <laughs> kept going. Yeah. Yeah, it is interesting to hear so many different paths. And I feel like I've, I've been coming out now for, this is my seventh season, and I still hear career paths that I'm like, wow. I didn't even know I could do that. That's really cool. I wish I had been able to hear all these career paths when I was high school or middle school or college or even as you know an adult early career trying to figure things out. Oh yeah, I went to a small, small high school in northern Wisconsin. Do you think I ever thought I would be doing this? <laughs> <laughs> Did you say yes. northern Wisconsin? Yep. Wow. Oh. I heard that. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. <laughs> I'm out and about in a boat right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't you know there? Hey? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I went to school in Chicago, so I got you. Oh. <laughs> Chicago. So do you drink from a bubbler or a water fountain? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard bubbler. <laughs> Sorry for the squeal. I've never heard bubbler. What is a bubbler? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a drinking fountain. A bubbler. Oh. I've never heard that. We call it bubblers. I was going to say, like, methane seep sounds like column bubblers, but... <laughs> we don't drink from methane seep. <laughs> No. <laughs> Come on, there's got to be someone watching from Wisconsin. Is Represent. there anybody? Wisconsin, are you out there? Oh, they're probably sleeping right now, actually. Yeah. It's a little late. We've got United States, Canada, Australia, Taiwan, Philippines, Ireland, United Kingdom, and Germany with us right now. Shout wow. out. What, what? I wonder what time it is in all of these places. Let's find out. I know, right? Many different time zones. Well, it's the morning in Germany, so guten Morgen. Can you, uh, Shift high pack up a little bit. Sure. You want to see waypoint five? Yeah, something a little bit more upslope. How upslope? Uh, no, that's good. Yep. Just want to know that it gets steeper eventually. Oh. <laughs> I think it's better, Steve. Don't worry. How far away is that? And I, Many. And I, and I said, <laughs> and I said, I said, I, I said we didn't need the back scatter. And now I'm regretting that decision. Yeah. Uh, this watch far away or next Yeah, the steeper slope will be about 300 meters off. Oh, we just started a bunch of shout outs from around the world right now. We've got a not Wisconsin, but Utah shout out. Okay. <laughs> um, Northern no, with Wisconsin is really close to Canada. Shout yep. out. Yep, I, I was very close to Canada. Uh oh, I'm here from Wisconsin. Oh We've yeah. We've got a Wisc somebody from Wisconsin. Scone? And yes, they have bubblers. That is yeah. a thing. <laughs> Scony represent. Um 
Edmond, Oklahoma, represented. Hello, Oklahoma. Aloha from Kauai. Woohoo, Aloha. Getting a lot of laughs from you all here in the UK. <laughs> Top of the hat to you? I don't know. <laughs> Tip of the hat to you? Top of the morning? It's an early morning was, yeah. there in the UK. <laughs> yeah. Calgary, Canada. Okay. Thank you for all you do. Looking good. Being stuck in landlocked province, I miss the ocean. Oh. This helps. Yes. Hello from Michigan, where they have water fountains and not bubblers. You must be from <laughs> Lower Michigan. <laughs> Good evening, Modesto, California. Woo. Hey, Jeremy California. Renner's from Modesto. Oh, there, there you go. Jeremy Renner. Oh, there you go. There's some <laughs> trivia. <laughs> I did really like the uh, the bubbler thing really setting off some great comments coming in. I think we've had a lot of, you know, interesting questions like, you know, what, how do you, what do you call this in this country or in this language? But bubbler is, and water fountain is definitely a new one. <laughs> and I think yep. that's just a Wisconsin thing. And there's still some parts that they will say drinking fountain or oh. water fountain. It's all, we also have stop and go lights. What are those? <laughs> Traffic lights. Stop, stop and go stop lights. Stop, stop and go. Okay. Stop and Basically, go lights. I think the yellow light doesn't exist for us. We it's just, just go stop and go. <laughs> stop and go light. <laughs> Oh, Southern Wisconsin says, yes, it's definitely a bubbler here. This bubbler thing is really popping on the, on the chat here. And I was, the voices in my head are telling me another one I forget often is we have parking ramps, not parking garages. Parking it's ramps. It's a parking ramp. A ramp. <laughs> Where I grew up, we just had a gravel lot, and that was the park. And that's where you park. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Oh. The shout outs are coming in. Let's see. Um, hello, Beijing. Hello, Victoria, Texas. Yeah, it's, it's a late night there. Hello, yes. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And hello, Portland, Oregon, home of the Benson Bubbler. Okay. Hmm. Oh, yeah. And I, unfortunately, I know that one's not my mother. She's not in Portland right now, so, but. <laughs> so we're, are we, Steve, what, are we like just in transit going up slope? What are? Yeah, we're uh, trying to cover some tracks over this uh, sedimented ridge. Um, on the bathymetry, it was suspected that this ridge would be more um, exposed hard hard substrate, but uh, it seems like the currents here are not all that strong to oh, keep it free of sediment, so it's pretty heavily sedimented. So we're trying to just keep making moves towards the next steep slope, which should be coming up in the next couple hundred meters. Yeah, we've got about two 250 meters. Okay. Um, can we put in another 100, step, 100 meter step at this speed? Or do you want to drop down to 0 0.3? Are you asking me? Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Let's let's do that. Okay. Down. Great. You can just keep moving until and kind of bring us in line with uh, under the ship somewhere Great. at the base of the slope so we can work up slowly. Okay. Come on. Yeah. Bridge, Nav. Uh, let's add one zero zero meters at the same bearing. Bubbler and uh, 
<laughs> drinking fountain thing is on on point here. Yeah, this bubbler water fountain debate yeah. is uh, making me think of the like pop versus soda. Yeah. You know? Mm. That just came up here too. Is it soda? <laughs> is it pop? Is it soda pop? Is it soda water? Or is it just Coke? Yeah, don't people just call it cola? Like, no cola. matter what drink it is, it's cola. cola. Yeah. <laughs> what about pop? You already said pop? Yep. Okay. Sparkling water? Yeah, what, how do you call that? Sparkling water? Yeah, is that not pop? Bubbly? Bubbly. bubbly. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with bubbly. There's a lot of different terminology here. But bubbly was like champagne. Yeah, oh, I, I think you're right. Think but there's also a seltzer brand called bubbly. Bubbly. Oh. <laughs> Is that the one commercials with Michael Bublé? Yes. <laughs> Seltzer water is really big right now. So we need to find some something something on the seafloor, right? <laughs> to draw our attention. Yes. Or, want, or conversations are wandering. Yes, they are. <laughs> Does this ship go any faster? <laughs> no, I'm joking. We're at 0 0.5. We'll be there in no time in 0 0.5. Actually, we're going 0 0.4, but we're speeding up. Sorry? Walking speed? Depends on how fast you're walking. Is this... Oh, I don't think you're on SPL. You're getting a lot of quizzical looks. You can pose this question to the class. Sorry. <laughs> so how fast does the average person walk? Anyone? Jordan, you've got to know this one. I <laughs> sure my, Google like, does. You're like my trivia person. <laughs> yeah. Sounds about. Yeah. Depends on how brisk you're walking. Yeah. Three to four miles per hour for the average person. So what's that convert to in knots? Well, that's a good question. How do we put knots into something that people would get? I'm looking at my chart. A uh, knot is about 1.1 1 .1 miles per hour. So. Pretty close to a mile per hour. Yeah. Many not, people not crazy tend to fast. walk That's a very interesting. Can we look at the brittle star? Seconds. You want to look at it? Yeah. What's it doing? It's oh, run. it's moving. It's going to run. Ooh. It's on it's the swimming. move. It's totally swimming. Yeah. Totally. It's doing the backstroke. So this is the yeah. first lone brittle star I've seen. I push in a little bit. I think there we saw one of these earlier. It had like an inflated oral disc. Or a central disc, and uh, was feeding on sediments. But this one is really weird. It's purple and red. Hmm. Never seen anyone like this before. You're gonna actually. Uh, never mind. Well, if you've never oh, seen yeah. one like that before. The central disc is purple. Wow. Steve, is there any possibility you want to sample this? No, no, okay. we, yeah, we, it wouldn't make any sense because we were restricted to sampling whole individuals until there are 10 in an area or so. Got it. It would run away. And it would probably run away, yeah. But this is fantastic imagery. We gotta no, go. You can, you can 4K it. Yep. Ooh. I'm gonna try and zoom in, but uh, it's a little off center. Yeah, sorry. Do that. Getting some jello. You want to do another 4K burst? Going to record. Recording. Stopped. All right. 
4K burst, brittle star. Got it. Okay, great. Off we go. What are we up to now? Total. 4K is it? six? Six. Yep. Could do three more in. You guys are taking this very seriously. Yeah, no. Those are set as minimums, or as max, like max expected. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. That's like telling a kid you can only have three M&Ms. Exactly. <laughs> Especially when Dan's on watch. <laughs> I mean, the, it's just a test, right? Yeah. Gotta try it out. Test as many things Shake as you Shake it want. down. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, Time right. for zipping. Zipping. Going back to the question of what is the walking speed, average walking speed in knots, and it's three knots. Or let's, yeah. So now we're going on a light jog then. Yeah. What's uh, our current speed right now? Not anywhere close to three knots. 0 0.5. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait. Ooh, it is way too early in the watch for me to be <laughs> dropping decimal points like that. <laughs> 0 0.5. So one time I clocked my grandma with her walker. <laughs> <laughs> she was going faster than we are now. <laughs> Just yeah. to put it in perspective. We're going slow. <laughs> <laughs> so why why can't we make 0.5 knots? Is it current? We are, we are making point. We oh, are. Okay. I thought we were doing 0.3. Is that another one of those star uh, formations? Uh, no. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, what? how far are we behind the ship now? We need to catch up. Another 100 meters. Yeah. We got meter, some time. 100, yep. 100 meters has been our uh, layback from the ship when we're doing 0.5. At okay. Step. I've seen it up to 200, which is, it depends on the currents, right? Yep. Let's keep going. We're almost there to the ridge. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Almost there. Bridge nav. Is that another 100 meters, same bearing? Thank you. Steve, question coming in about the brittle star. Yep. They have eyes. Because it started to move when we no, got it's close. Up there on the DP screen somewhere. It's yeah. tough to Bridge. say that uh, these, these these don't have eyes. Um, but, you know, one of the things it was doing is it had its arm tips uh, curled up in the air, which could suggest that it's probably using them as sort of some sort of like fine S sensory. sensory. Yeah. Uh, I look at that one all the time. Too. Yeah, I think it's a. It so it's up. detecting no, I mean pressure uh, or to current. Oh you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That the vehicle is pushing along. You. Yeah. A lot of animals will do that, um, especially brittle stars uh, uh, on coral colonies. We've noticed in some parts of the Central Pacific, there's some some species of brittle stars that you know will live in coral colonies, but as you approach the coral colony, the pressure wave from Hercules creates or imparts a force upon them and they they fall off the colony um, and they just fall down to the bottom not sure why they do that they probably worked very hard to get up into the coral but they just abandoned ship not clear if it's uh, some sort of defense or you know, maybe they're just trying to take advantage of uh, flow or something like that Sea cucumbers might do that also, especially the swimming kind. If you were to approach them and you know impart some sort of pressure or current on them, they might take off. You know, take take that as a signal for hey, there's a current coming. Uh, I'm going to take off, so it carries me to a patch of food. You know, some distance away. Got it. You want to look at that guy again, Steve? Or are you happy to keep going? What are you looking at? 4K. Oh, no, we can move on. Yeah, right. yeah purple serianthid. When collecting samples this deep, are we able to keep um, the organisms like in an aquarium? 
how do you preserve them for further studies? Very good question. Uh, depends on what the needs are uh, of that sample. So for the most part, a lot of the biological specimens, um, we try and use a kind of multi-purpose preservative, and that's in a high concentration, high proof alcohol, uh, ethanol, 95% um, or higher. So it's not, not really something you can buy you know, in the store. It's something we have to order from a chemical company. Um, but having a high concentration ethanol preserves not only the genetic material, uh, you know, DNA specifically of the collection, but also uh, prohibits it from decomposing uh, from bacteria or things like that. Um, if it's a gelatinous organism, oftentimes um, you know, the DNA will be preserved by ethanol, but the actual structure of the organism will not be. So we need to use a, a hardener, uh, usually formaldehyde or formalin to, to harden the tissues. Um, and then it can be preserved in a lower concentration of ethanol. Uh, so it could be looked at for morphology. We use both on the ship, uh, depending on what we bring up. Um, the majority of things go in ethanol, and then uh, if there's any particularly special treatments, uh, for example, if they were looking at isotopes or um, you know anything like this where it's sensitive to chemicals, we can just freeze them. We have a minus 80 deep freezer uh, and uh, other types of freezers on board that can keep things stable until they can be shipped when we get back to port. Cool. Comparable procedures for rocks, or what? What was that? What would that look like for the geology samples? Yeah. So for geologic samples, um, we can't do all that much on the ship right now because we don't have a rock saw. Um, it just got into port, literally like a day after we left or something. Um, but if we had one we would cut some of the rocks open to be able to describe the mineralogy, um, color, state of the weathering of the rock, if there's ferromanganese crust or not, that kind of stuff. Um, but for now, the plan is to, you know, get them labeled properly, um, let them sit out to dry, and they'll eventually get shipped back to the University of Rhode Island um, for the Marine Geological Samples Laboratory. Cool. Can we zoom out a bit on Herc, or are we, uh, it seems like we're zoomed in a bit. I think we are, yeah. Want me to zoom out, Dan? Sure. Just a little bit. That's good. You all right with that, Steve? Yeah, looks good. A any more, and you'll see the... Yep. The... Seven thirty. So as we approach the um, slope here, we're going to want to settle up when we start to see some loose rocks uh, and probably do another rock collection or two. But uh, we'll start to wait until we see some good material to slow down. Right there. Still pretty uh, bleary on the mesotech. Yeah, if we want to put the ship right at the base of uh, the slope, we'll need to do another 50 meter move after this one. Oh, what's that thing? Yep, that's fine. Okay. You're going to start heading due north, right? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, let's do that. Steve, what is this? Oh, yeah. Let's take a look at that. 
Yeah, or if we have time. We do. We might be going. There's another, maybe a sea urchin past this one. I think it might be a persingid, which oh. is very unusual because you don't oh, typically see persingids in soft yeah, sediment. Yeah. Brisigin? There should be Bris a Brisigin. Which phyla? That is a type of sea star, so a kind of term. Brisigin sea star, it's a, I think it's a family of sea stars. That's a filter feeder, he just got 10 years worth of. <laughs> No, I think, well, I mean, they they do feed. Uh, the bottom feeder? They, I'll back up a little here, maybe. Let's take a look first. They, uh, Ooh, that zoom is so nice. Yeah. I think it's a press injured. Yeah, great. Well, and one of its arms is actually in regrowth, the one that's coming off the top there. So usually oh, yeah. these are on hard sediment, or uh, uh, hard uh, rock substrate, not soft sediment. So I'm not sure what it's doing here. Hmm. But probably looking for the hard bottom like we are. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe we're close. <laughs> Pardon me. Maybe we're here. <laughs> maybe, maybe we're close. Oh, see, what's up with its arm? Is that a regrow? Like, is it regrowing one of its yeah. arms? Yes, uh, up on top. Yep, and it has all these these short spines coming off the sides of the arms too. To Possibly ease, defensive. Ease off on the verticals, and the camera stop shaking. All right, um, I'm happy here with this. Okay, Let's see if I can get out of the hole I just dug here. was something uh, right here too. What's the location of the 4K cam versus the Herc Zeus cam? Like, is it looking down, forward? It, it is looking down. It's showing uh, approximately, uh, oh, I would say that whatever that thing is in the center of it right now is about one half meter from the vehicle. Okay. So it's looking uh, really close to the front of the vehicle and about a meter out. And it's uh, it's hard mounted there. So the, I mean, it's really soft here. <coughs> the Zeus is, um, it moves in and out, up and down, left and right. So because it's such a giant camera, we can't um, tilt it down any farther because it will hit in the back of the vehicle. So Zeus has a pan and tilt? It does, yeah, and it's uh, probably like almost a meter long. And we use a five gallon bucket for a lens cover on it. It takes two people to lift it. Oof. Most of that is uh, optics and lens and um, titanium. It's another sea star. Slime, yeah, that's like a slime one. Slime, slime star. star. My yep. new fave. <laughs> Can you uh, come up for a minute? Just like come under you there and I'll get the tether over our head again. I think we're good there. Thanks. Can you get any indication when looking at the sediments that you're getting closer to rock, like when they get thinner or bridge now? Really tough to tell. Uh, we do have a sub bottom. Uh, five zero um, meters bearing zero zero zero. It's on Hercules or Argus is the sub bottom. Argus. Argus. Yeah. But I don't know to what degree it can penetrate the sediments to tell us that information. I've uh, never figured it out. I don't think very well. Um, so no, it's it, we really don't know until we start seeing, seeing it. exposed, yeah, rock on the sonar or something like that. 
Should have asked the precision star for directions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you would have gotten a good answer. You would have gotten <laughs> five directions. <laughs> or maybe ten different directions. Okay. This is a cucumber, yes? This is a... Yeah, this is a, a type of synelacted sea cucumber, I think. Maybe not. They're actually way more diverse than you think sea cucumbers you think you know them and then they go and change their identity yeah so like these with the the tiny legs yeah it's a synelacted they look they all look slightly different you know different colors different opacities different uh Zoom in there, baby, density of tentacles wow this one has small legs Actually. Diversity. Kind of looks like a sea pig, too. Yeah. Technically, not the same group as sea pigs, but yeah, it does, it does have those appendages. Yeah. All right. If you need to move, you can move. Yeah, I'm good. Don't, don't worry about a uh, quick play there with your new toy. Oh. <laughs> you want to do a 4K? Sure. We're sure. landed, so yeah. Sure, let's do it. Let's do 4K. You ready? Ready. Ready? Ready. Record. Stopped. Okay, coming out, and let's go. Why are they doing uh, such short little... Because we can't, don't have the bandwidth to send anything larger to shore. Oh, but we could record longer ones for... Uh, for local use. He wants some real time, that's what he wants, huh? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, Jonathan wants the uh the raw files, does he? Mm-hmm. What was that thing that looked like, oh, it says Tina Turner's hair. I maybe, are they referring to the sea cucumber? <laughs> I'm trying to pick the picture of that right now. <laughs> Sorry, uh, end of my leash. Uh, yeah, you can if you want. Or get a better close up about the as long as the tether is not hitting Argus. Something I know nothing about. Um, from the web, I recently saw a documentary from 2016 about mining manganese nodules. I knew nothing of that. Are we going to be learning or looking for any sort of manganese type rocky stuff? Yeah, so uh, there, Coralie Tammy. Rodriguez, who is another PhD student, um, she's actually on the upcoming watch from That's 8 good, to 12. Um, her research focuses on ferromanganese crusts on rocks, um, specifically on volcanic rocks. Um, and she's kind of aiming to um, use her research to better understand how the water conditions uh, play a role in the accumulation of these things on the volcanic rocks. Um, yeah, They're, all the precious metals that are scavenged in those are really useful for things like lithium batteries um, and other sources of renewable energy that we're kind of moving towards. Um, and so it's important to kind of figure out where these things are okay. um, Thanks for that. on the ocean floor. But yeah, she could probably answer this question. Awesome, and she's a coming up yes. in, you know, within the next hour, she'll be up here on science. Next so 20 minutes. Oh, time wow. goes by. Yeah. Time yeah. flies when you're having fun. So hopefully we will be collecting some of these rocks with the ferromanganese crests on them. Cool. Yeah. Oh, um,
question for me to just put out there. How do we receive our questions? If you go onto our website, Nautilus Live, um, so again, if you want. all the way down underneath the video, it says send a message to our team. Our team is in the control room ready to Perfect. answer your questions. So you can type your questions in there and press send and they will eventually arrive here and we'll be able to connect. For those of you that are wondering, again, Nautilus Live, right underneath the video feeds, send a message to our team. Great. Nice shot of a semaphobranchid eel, cut, cutthroat eel. Pretty characteristic fish for these tips. Except for all the disturbances in the water there. Sorry <laughs> Why is that. it called the cutthroat eel? I was just going to ask that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ask you, it's, it's really interesting. Um, so, they, they'll often uh, do this thing where they kind of flush out uh, bits of debris and material from their uh, gills. And when they do that, the gill plates open up and it looks like their uh, you know, throats are cut. Interesting. Cut throat, yeah. So if they do that, they'll kind of do this like sneeze thing where they just like wiggle a little bit, <laughs> and then uh, yeah, you can see. Oh, yeah, like, like that! that. Oh, oh my god! Yep, like that. Right on cue. Right on cue. Wow. <laughs> see. But usually, sometimes they flare their gill plates a little oh. bit more. Yeah, oh. he's. Like that one just bit itself. Yep. Did anyone else see that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Really weird. Never seen that before. I think we disoriented it. Blinded it. Maybe I mean, that kind of happens with the dogs sometimes. They get like spooked by their own tail. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Steve, we're here. We're, uh, the ship's on site now at the base of the slope. Yep, let's keep going. You want to head up 0 0.3 knots? Yes, yeah, a little bit slower, but until we start seeing some hard substrate, just keep it rolling. We have uh, some returns in Argus, which is haven't had in a while, so maybe that's a hint. Cool. Okay. That sounds like a good plan. Ready to go up, or you want to catch up to the ship? Um. Um, um, how far back are we? 20, 40. Yeah, let's start moving at that slow speed. Is that okay. the plan? Yeah, 0 0.3. Roger. So, Steve, it looks like we're looking for rocks. Here's the question that came Fish in. Enough. Are you guys going up the ridge? Is uh, it getting any steeper? We're going to reduce to 0 0.3 knots. Uh, one zero zero. What an appropriate and zero zero zero. timely question. Um, yeah, we are actually just about to climb up another steep face. Uh, so the way this dive was planned and progressed as we climbed up a rather steep face very early on uh, and we sampled rocks along that um, depth range. Uh, we're also going to sample a couple more rocks pretty much as soon as we start to see them uh, as we head up the second steep face. Um, even though the past two faces we've been going up are about maybe in the 30 degree-ish uh, range, it's not the steepest face. We'll uh, explore on this dive. I think the the one that the uh, final face that goes up to the platform is something in excess of 45 degrees, so it'll get pretty dramatic. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think uh, this is this is the longest stretch of sediment that's expected on the dive. If if uh, the rest of the planning is to be believed, <laughs> the planning that you did. <laughs> Your plan? <laughs> Some people, you know, I, Backscatter and I have a love-hate relationship. <laughs> yeah, I don't trust it. As it does with most everyone that tries to use it. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, when you when you need it, or when, when you feel like you need it, uh, it's, it's sometimes it's not available, and sometimes when you, you know, you don't, you don't think you need it, you really wish you had it. Backscatter tells us kind of the approximate reflectivity of the sediment uh, from our multi-beam mapping. Uh, that so was my next tell, question, yeah. was like, what's backscatter? It, so when we send sound into the seafloor you know, through a uh, multi-beam acoustic system. Quick zoom there, Timmy. Uh, the sound will get scattered or reflected or absorbed depending on what kind of sub uh, substrate there is. So obviously something soft like sediment like this would not have a very high reflectivity. Uh, it'll absorb the sound, uh, but something that's hard exposed rock will probably reflect and bounce back a lot of that sound. 
so or you know bounce out uh, the sound so we say it has a high Thank back you. scatter it scatters the sound in a lot of different directions Looks like Tina Turner has joined us in the van. Is that the same <laughs> <laughs> the same one? <laughs> yep. Yeah, I think that's a that's a synolactic sea cucumber probably called uh Anerophanta, which is uh one of the wackier ones. I actually don't know why a lot of those uh sea cucumbers have all those tentacles. I I assume they have some sort of sensory function. Um some of them only have a couple of tentacles, and some of them have... Oh, there's uh, Ipnops, I think, Ipnops. It's a type of... Uh, it's a type of tripod fish, I think. No, oh, it's its own family. Ipnops. Another question from the web. Are you guys on a ridge line or a point where it changes aspects or are we going upslope? Is there any sense of currents down there? And what type of sediment are we seeing? It's a good question about the currents. I haven't actually checked uh, with the pilots at this site. Have you all noticed any currents up there? Yeah, uh, you can, uh, I'll just, Display some dust here, and you can see what it does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect timing! <laughs> Great, <laughs> Great demo. <laughs> what happened demo there? Experiment. Uh, you can also get a good shot of it there in the Argus camera. So it looks like downslope slightly. Yeah. yeah. Very, very gentle. Yeah. You saw from a couple of the earlier botched landings that it eventually cleared up, and it yep. was kind of blowing into our face. But not a lot. Otherwise, that dust cloud in Argus would be gone already. Yeah, so no current really to speak of, uh, but, you know, we are diving on a ridge, so, you know, expect especially the part of the ridge we're on, we would expect to see quite a bit of um, current, typically, because the currents will often wrap around these features. but. Um, we picked the, kind of the best dive plan we could for where we had to be uh, because of weather over the past few days. So I think um, another reason we're seeing a lot of the sediment in this area is you know, low currents, but also you know, there's probably some sediment coming off of the island nearby, and the sediment builds up over you know, tens and hundreds of thousands of years. I think we're officially at the base of the ridge. That was uh, me crashing into it there with the dust. And it, it's definitely steeper here. We're starting to get some uh, yeah. Kathy and Argus. Yeah, oh, I'm starting okay. to see that too. A little bit of red there in Herc, so. Checks out with our contours. Yeah. So 20 meters ahead, yeah. ish. Yeah. Or is it 40 meters? Uh, how, do you, how do you count those divisions? Uh, Typically, uh, the one on the right, which is Hercules, is 10 meter divisions, and the one on the left is 20 meter divisions. So is the, is the center of the, I don't know, sonar at zero meters? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we look out 50 meters with Herc, and we look out 100 meters with Argus. Cause Argus is higher up, so we can see further out without getting a uh, backscatter. Yep. It's definitely steeper here. Our viewer thanks you for the demonstration of the sediments and the current. <laughs> that was very clear. Keep that one in your back pocket. Yeah. If you ever get that question again. Keep that one in my back pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Challenging to uh, not stir up the sediment. Uh, rock. right. Rocks. Yeah. So. I see rocks. That's usually a good indication that uh, you're getting to a steeper slope. Yeah, steeper yeah. slope. Well, we've lined it up perfectly for the next watch. 
Totally. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Oh, and a sponge. Oh, what is that? Oh. Oh, stock sponge. Very yeah. cool. Uh, looks like a flower. Yep. The ship, uh, I'll stop now. Underwater okay, megaphone. Uh, we got 40 meters, These so definitely we can stop look if you like want. Yeah, let's stop up. Pillow Bridge lavas enough. in the way that there's kind of starburst-shaped patterns position. broken open here. Yeah. It's so. nice to have them stop for... Uh, so I'm not sure. Usually we'd find, like, change. tailless pile or rubble pile at the bottom of these slopes, but seeing that it's fairly steep... Um, not, not Might just not yet, have that know? yet, but... There's something on his, uh, at the base of him there, too, huh? Are you going to hold here? Uh, yeah, we, we so just held. Um, I stopped the ship, the change it, as well. the Argus will swing in probably okay. another, I don't know what, 50 meters. So everything should be static by the time uh, the van erupts in chaos when eight more people come in and we all talk at the same time. <laughs> so we got about three minutes. Yeah. So we're going to pause here. Is that what the plan is, Steve? Uh, I think that's the plan, yeah. I'll, I'll uh, keep creeping ahead for the next couple minutes as Argus swings in under the ship. And then we'll yep. probably spend about five minutes uh, doing a handover. Yeah, if you see any rocks, we'll put a pin in it for later. All right. Was that a glass coral? A stocked glass coral? Glass I mean, sponge. sponge. Yeah. Yep, exactly. If you've sampled the glass sponges when they come up, are they hard? It depends. Some of them are hard and some of them or are flexible. very yeah, like spongy. Yeah. It depends on how their sclerites are arranged. Um, in their body, yeah, mm. get some different <laughs> textures. Some of them are crunchy like potato chips, and some of them are very soft like like a sponge. Mm. But usually, when they're dry, um, they can still, you know, if you touch them with bare hands, the the spicules will can still get you. yeah yeah spine yeah. you. Cool. Um, even if they don't right away, it's not like a cactus, you know, type of a feeling. But you know, they will stick in your skin and you know irritate you a little bit. What was yeah. that? The viewers okay. are saying, yay rocks. Yay rocks. <laughs> yay rocks. Yay rocks. <laughs> the rocks, the rocks. Well, this area looks pretty good. I think there's some candidates here. I don't know. Maybe here-ish. There's also some, a lot of these outcrops kind of have oxidation right on the, you know, the, the margins. So th this, is, this is good stuff for, I think, a lot of our geologists on board uh, both yeah. some pretty angular stuff and crusty stuff um argus is almost up there steve so oops yep i'm gonna uh okay all right folks for those of you uh viewing go on the website we're okay. about to have a watch change so i'm gonna hear from some new people thank you so much for joining us and until the next time yay rocks <laughs>
think we're gonna keep looking for a rock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, if you go to chat on the top. Whoa, way too spicy, too spicy. Get away. That's annoying. Getting close to the rocks there, Jake. So we only got 11 meters delta here. Oh, what? What? What the heck? <laughs> Why is it not updating? What the heck? What the heck? What the heck, Jake? It says it's updating and it's bogus. Who's right, you or me? Video swapping.